Welcome, everybody. We are at the President's School, the University of Virginia, and Scott Stadium. Today, we will be high-stepping with two of the best in the ACC, as ABC and the College Football Association present Clemson against Virginia. As we look at the ACC standings, we see that Florida State and Virginia are the only two unbeaten teams in the conference. Meanwhile, travel south a little bit, actually a lot, and you will see Clemson at 0-2. They have never started an ACC season at 0-3. And the Clemson Tigers are about to come onto the field. They will be led by head coach Kenny Hatfield, now in his third season as head coach of Clemson. Last year, they went to the Citrus Bowl, and this year, they are off to an extremely slow, disappointing start. The Tigers ready for battle against their ACC rivals. Clemson 2-2 two two overall this season, but 0-2 as we saw earlier in the ACC. A must-win game for Clemson. They had high expectations coming into the season, and so far they have not met them. And here come the Cavaliers. series record Clemson has won 29 out of 31 games this series has meant death for Virginia but in the last two years they have a win and a tie against Clemson good afternoon everybody Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt in the house in Charlottesville and we have a great fall afternoon for a football game and Tim this is a much anticipated game especially for Clemson. This game is as critical as a heart attack for them. They have to win. Well, you mentioned the fact, Mark, this is a club which lost to Florida State by four, lost to Georgia Tech by four. Now they're trying not to lose the season. As a matter of fact, you look at both these clubs today, they rank near the top statistically in both running offense and run defense, which gives you a pretty good indication of what kind of game we'll see. The Clemson Tiger coaches are really concerned about injuries, though. Take a look at this, because the battery, the three top guys, the center, the quarterback, the tailback, all banged up. Richard Moncrief, the quarterback, has an injured hip. John Harris, the center, a gimpy knee. Ronald Williams, all everything tailback. He's banged up. None of these guys 100%, but all will try to play. All will start. Now, on the other side of the field with the Cavaliers, I want to introduce you to one of the best running backs in the country. His name is Terry Kirby. Now, Marshall Falk has gotten most of the Heisman attention, but here's a guy who's a future pro coming off back-to-back 200-yard -back games, his second in the country. He averages 150 yards a game, quality back. And then on defense, Kirby's cousin, lifelong companion, Chris Slade, 6'5", 235 pounds, all-American defensive end. In the Atlantic Coast Conference, they say he's a Lawrence Taylor type, and the coaches will move him around today, try to use him as best as they can against Clemson. Kirby and Slade sounds like a law firm. We'll have number 25 Clemson against number 10 Virginia in just a moment. And as we go to break, ponder this thought. Virginia founded by Thomas Jefferson in 1819. Wonder what he would have thought about this year's edition of the Cavaliers. We'll be right back. CFA College Football. This ABC Sports exclusive. Brought to you by Chevy Trucks. The trucks you can depend on. The trucks that last. By the Die Hard Battery. Now with more power when you need it most. By State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Heineken. Just being the best is enough. Scott Stadium, Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt in Charlottesville getting set for the kickoff. This one, number 10 against number 25, Virginia against Clemson. Now, the Tigers won the opening toss. They have elected to defer. 
Jeff Sabe will kick it off for Clemson, and back deep, it's Jared Washington and Kevin Brooks for Virginia. An early indication, Mark, because of those guys banged up that we talked about offensively, Kenny Hatfield wants his defense on first and set the tempo of this game. Defense, of course, has always been a Clemson staple. Here's the kick. And it's Washington on the five. Washington with a nice return out to the 30-yard line. And that's where quarterback Bobby Goodman will take the reins of this Virginia offense. Goodman, 5'11", 211 pounds, a senior from Suffolk, Virginia. He's the second highest rated passer in the country. And now the diehard starting lineups, the backs and the receivers for the Cavaliers. Way, Terry Kirby, the guy we talked about in the opening, maybe the second best rusher in the country behind Marshall Falk. No huddle right out of the bat for UVA. Backs line up in the eye. Slot right, the handoff to Terry Kirby. And Kirby makes it up to the 40. He may have the first down. It wasn't quite a touchdown run like last week against Wake Forest, but he'll take that, I'm sure. And now a look at the defensive, uh, the offensive line, actually, for Virginia. Mark Dixon is the best athlete up front. He's the guy to watch. Clemson defense, Forney Buckner and Al Richard. Big fellas up front. And the linebackers are led by Tim Jones. He's the leading tackler. Mark, an interesting bit of strategy right here by Clemson early on. Virginia comes out with no huddle. And now, just so they can adjust their defense, they actually called for the measurement. The Clemson captain stepped up and said, hey, bring those chains out. We want to measure this thing, which gives them time without the huddle to readjust their defense. The chess match beginning in earnest already. And there's one of the players, George Welch, in his 11th year at Virginia, coming over from the Naval Academy, and really, Tim, taking this program to the next tier, to the next level. Second down and one. The backs line up in the eye. Kirby again, and he'll have the first down and then some. Terry Kirby, 6'3", 218 pounds. Virginia has scored quickly all year. 17 of 29 scores have come within the first three minutes of the game as you look at Terry Kirby's numbers. 44 points a game. That's a lot of offense. And, you know, by looking at and speaking with head coach George Walsh, he wasn't all that pleased. He's really worried and a little bit apprehensive about this contest this afternoon. That's Aaron Mundy in motion. Out of the shotgun, Goodman. And it's batted down at the 45-yard line. That's Tim Jones, number 56, who was in the neighborhood. Goodman, the second most accurate passer in the country. 15 touchdowns and only six interceptions. Mark, you mentioned how Welch was not happy with his ball club. He's got enough talent to win the big games, but last week he really felt his club did not improve. And as a matter of fact, he thought they backed up some and lost some of their fundamental soundness. Yeah, Wake Forest made it a game and late. It was 24-17 to at one point before they finally salted it away. Tyrone Davis in motion, backs in the eye. Kirby, the deep back, and he pounds it out to the 47-yard line, Tim. Bring it back. I'm going to tell you right now, Clemson lined up in the neutral zone, and the official, the side judge, had his hand on the flag as soon as they lined up. He couldn't pull it, obviously, till the ball was snapped. But soon as he, soon as it was snapped, he dropped the flag by his feet. Tim, a top priority for this uh, Clemson team today, obviously. We have offsides on the defense. Lined up in the neutral zone. Tell him, Dale. Yeah. You, you saw it right away. Nobody has to move, but as soon as that ball snapped, he drops that flag. Brenson Buckner, the nose guard there for Clemson. 6'2", 302 pounds. Second and five. Top priority, as I was saying, for Clemson, Tim, stopping Terry Kirby, or at least containing him soon. Interesting situation on Mark, second and five. They can run or they can pass, but Kirby's been the, the workhorse. A little option, and now Goodman drops back out of it. Wide open, Aaron Mundy. 
And Mundy has a first down at the Clemson 27-yard line, a 26-yard pickup and a first down. Exactly what I was trying to say. Second and five, now the defense doesn't know what your tendency is. You can have the run or you can have the pass. Kirby had been the workhorse, so they fake the option to him, drop back and throw it. The defense right here is looking for 42 at the bottom left of your screen. Instead, they just sneak Mundy out the tight end just let him drain his way out there like a blocker get into the flats and hit it you don't like those guessing downs second and five breaks tendencies puts him in an either or situation and Tim, this team comes out of the blocks extremely quick outscoring their opponents 64 to 7 combined in the first quarter under pressure Goodman gets it off into the end zone incomplete for Tyrone Davis. Yeah, they can thank Wayne Simmons for that. He hit Goodman just as he was releasing the ball, which I think made that ball fly a little bit. Another thing, Tim, about Virginia, if they get out of the blocks quickly here, which they have a tendency to do, Clemson, not really the type of team that come from behind. They've had trouble with their passing game. Well, Moncrief has. Now, last week they put Solomon in. He's an option quarterback. And then their true freshman, Sapp, is the best thrower of all of them. Mundy switches sides. And here comes Davis now in motion. Kirby. And he's gang tackled at about the 25-yard line. Maybe had two yards if he's lucky. This Clemson defense, as you mentioned, one of the top defenses against the run. Well, and the game plan for Virginia is basic. Number one, run Kirby. And they want that power. And then once the defense starts keying on Kirby, it loosens things up for the play like we saw with Monday. And sometimes number two is throw it to Kirby. His next catch will be 100 for his career, and that's impressive. It's Demetrius Allen in motion now out of the shotgun. All day to throw. And he's brought down by Kenzel Jackson, number 13, the inside linebacker. Ashley Shepard was also there. But Jackson was the first one to get there out of LaGrange, Georgia. 5'11", 224 pounds. He is a senior. And one of those Clemson players that really runs to the ball, Tim. Watch number 13. Here comes Jackson, 5'11", 224. Very smart, aggressive player. He averages a tackle every four plays. He flushes them. Shepard finishes them. And they make the big stop. So now Virginia is forced to punt. Patrick Parkle Road is on the Clemson 47. He'll try and aim for the corner here, and he doesn't get it. A 33-yard punt that goes into the end zone. So now it looks like a good decision by Clemson after they won the toss to defer. The defense holds, and they get the ball. Well, the most impressive thing for Kenny Hatfield and Ron Dickerson, the defensive coordinator, has to be the fact that the defense did give ground. But once it got backed up, then it put Virginia going back the other way. Richard Moncrief, the starting quarterback, completing only 41% of his passes so far this season. And now the diehard starting lineups for the Clemson Tigers. Rodney Blunt is the starting tailback, and here's the play, and they get it out near the 24-yard line. The give was to Howard Hall, the fullback. And now a look at the offensive line for Clemson. They average 301 pounds. They've been eating a lot of red beans and rice. And then some. Now we talked about Chris Slade earlier for the Virginia defense. Look at the linebackers. And it's second down. The toss. And that'll be a first down by Rodney Blunt. Tried to turn the corner as we take a look at the Virginia secondary now. They are led by Greg Jeffries, who has three interceptions. Smith, Lyle, and McClellan join him in the secondary. So it's a first down for Clemson on their first possession. Moncrief may not be the best thrower on his team, may not be the best athlete or quarterback, but Clemson has gone 156 plays without a turnover. That's why he's starting. First down, his first pass, and he doesn't get it off. Sacked to the 23. Ryan Keel made the tackle and a loss of nine on the play.
defensive coordinator Rick Lance gave this team an overhaul. He's given Virginia a more aggressive, instinctive approach. They fly to the football. Used to be a defense that would pop and read and react. They don't do that anymore. Now they read on the run. And that's going to have Kenny Hatfield concerned all day. As if he didn't have enough to worry about. Second and 19 in Montcrief. Burns an early timeout, and well, I mean Burns. Well, he just barely made it. The play clock was down to one. He had to call that timeout or take the penalty. Smart play on Montcrief's part. Zero zero in Charlottesville, Virginia. Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt as we look at some other scores in the top ten. Washington and Cal just getting underway. And two close ones in a row for Miami. Wow. Second and 19 after the timeout. Moncrief rolling out. And he got popped at the 26-yard line that time by Keith Wilde, the strong safety who came up and made the tackle. There's already been a switch, Mark. John Harris, the center we talked about, is now out of the ball game. Bryce Nelson, number 61, comes in and replaces him. So the power game, which they were going to try to establish up the middle, they've got to change their thinking. They've got to start hitting the corners now. Perimeter, going to the tight end, wide side of the field. We just saw him do it there. All three plays have been away from Chris Slade. See if they come this way now, the wide side. Here we go on third and long. Moncrief, quarterback draw, and he'll be far short of the first down. Back to New York now and John Saunders. Mark, you remember week one when Arkansas lost to the Citadel. It cost their coach's job, and Todd Wright here, 41 yards as Arkansas knocks off Tennessee in the biggest upset of the season. It was four of five on the day. Back to you, Mark. Maybe one of the biggest upsets of the college football season so far. The punt now. And here's Washington back on his 25 yard line. Boy, they are licking down on the field. Tackled at the 34. 44 yard punt, eight yards on the return. You know, there are two words that send Virginia players into a cold sweat. The streak. They are 1-1-29. One, one, and 29, Pardon me, 1-29-1 and one against Clemson. Here's what Welsh had to say about it. I think we reached a level where we could compete with them three or four years ago. We didn't win then, but we were, you know, we made the games closer and we weren't dominated physically. And, and it was with speed, which was a factor for us against Clemson. But the last two, well, we won in 90. I think we earned the win and we played a pretty good game and tied them a year ago. So I think that's the psychological part's over for Virginia. Well, that's Terry Kirby out to the 39 yard line, tackled by Warren Forney that time on first down and 10. This is the number one scoring offense in the country, averaging 44 points a game. And part of the reason is, major part of the reason is the offensive line here at Virginia, it could be the best they've ever had. Look at that. Sam and Kenningham, where they just pushed the Clemson defensive line 10 yards deep that last time. Backside of the eye, Goodman to pass on second down, and he hits Charles Way. The fullback fights his way for five extra yards. He's out near midfield. And close to a Virginia first down. Again, defensively, everything you do is geared to 42. So that stops everybody, holds him up for a second. Goodman now has time to throw, does, comes back to his fullback, Way. Way is stepping in for Gary Steele, who's got a bad shoulder. He's 6'3", 232 pounds, and he used that weight and that power to get the first. That's lined up out of the eye again. Play action, good ball handling that time by Goodman. There's a quarterback that can run a little bit. A pickup of 14 yards, another Virginia first down. The tackle by Tim Jones. All right, the scouting report that Virginia has says that Wayne Simmons, the outside linebacker, is extremely aggressive. Well, that time, if you watch the top of your screen, number 49, his aggressiveness gets him into trouble here. He thinks Kirby has it. Goodman takes it right around. There's no flood control, no containment, and thus the big gainer. Part of the strategy that the Virginia coaches talked about using prior to the game, Kirby up the middle down to the 33-yard line. 
Last week, he had a career-high 214 yards, and they keep him busy. 24 already this afternoon. Oh, uh, he's the co-captain, the leader, the hardest worker. Plus, he's just a great talent. He works so hard at practice, they try to get him to sit out and take some blows. Let the other guys have a, a few repetitions, but he doesn't want to do that. He wants to be in every play. Tremendous leadership qualities. Former basketball player, Terry Kirby. Out of the shotgun now. Goodman into the end zone. Touchdown, Tyrone Davis. He's in the house. Virginia strikes quickly and convincingly here in the first quarter, taking a 6-0 lead. Michael Houston with the extra point to make it 7-0. Boy, how things have changed. This is the first time Virginia has ever been favored to beat Clemson since 1985, and they are playing like they are the more confident team. Streak? What streak? Forget about it. 7-0, Virginia. Davis, number 82, they call him the go-to guy. We're going to show you why. First of all, Bobby Goodman, the quarterback, has set his game plan up perfectly. Now watch this. He ranks number two in the nation in passing efficiency. He's two for two today. He drops back, and all of a sudden, he sees Davis wide open, working against James Trapp, the All-American track star. Just blew by him. Trapp evidently was expecting the run. Virginia knew that, went past him, and scored. Tyrone Davis, 33-yard touchdown reception, and the Cavaliers lead 7-0. Tyrone Davis already this season with five touchdown receptions. Last year he led Virginia in receiving as a freshman too. Talented guy. Very similar in stature the way he plays to Herman Moore the number one pick out with the Lions. He's 6'5", 214 pounds Tyrone Davis is. His initials you've got it TD. Spell it right Jack. <laughs> Andre Humphrey and Greg Good are back deep to receive the kickoff from Michael Houston. Seven nothing Virginia. We're underway here in the first quarter. Six twenty six to play in the opening frame. Virginia has won nine consecutive home games here at Scott Stadium. This is Humphrey who thinks about it and says I don't think so. Clemson going to start on the 20 yard line. Michigan up early on Michigan State. We'll see Michigan next week against Indiana. Yeah, Tyrone Wheatley, one of the number of talented running backs. What do you think about this one? Stanford coming off that win over Notre Dame. Big game against UCLA. First down and 10. Blunt and Hall out of the eye now for Clemson. This is Rodney Blunt. And he's stacked up at the 22 yard line. At this time, we'd like to pause five seconds to allow our ABC stations to identify themselves. Mark Jones and Tim Brand here at Scott Stadium in Charlottesville, and it is seven to nothing for the Cavaliers with six minutes to play in the first quarter. Two tight ends in now for Virginia. Give us to the fullback that time, Howard Hall. Hall from Clemson, 6'1", 240. Clemson offensively, take a look at this now. Clemson will take wider splits in their offensive line when the Tigers want to run inside. They've been doing that. It's been fairly consistent. And right now, to be brutally honest, it looks like Virginia's figured that out because they're shutting it down. And Tim, I was talking earlier that Clemson's offensive line averages 301 pounds. So they've closed the gap. They're not going to run. Moncrief will throw to the near sideline, and it's ruled incomplete. He tried to hit Blunt, who came out of the backfield.
So it's another punting situation for Clemson. That was their second possession and they will have to punt again. That's Jared Washington standing on his own 38 yard line and Nelson Welch is the punter doing both duties this year. Washington calls for the fair catch on the 30. See now that's a strong punt right there. It's a 46 yarder. Welch has been taking a lot of heat because statistically he averages under 38 yards a punt. But people don't realize he's had seven punts inside the 20 and obviously that is what the coaches want but it's not the statistics builder that punters like to have. 46 yard punt there really helps Clemson. And Tim we did the game last year when Nelson Welch really saved the game and tied it up for Clemson with 46 seconds to go. He kicked the, kicked the game time field goal. Again, no huddle for the Cavaliers. Out of the shotgun. Kirby in motion. Goodman rolls out of the pocket, fires incomplete. Tried to hit number 81, Patrick Jeffers. Another one of those tall Virginia receivers. He stands 6'4". Dangerous pass to Ashley Shepard, the outside linebacker, is 6'3 and a half. And Goodman, the quarterback's only 5'11". Well, Ashley came free. And when Shepard put his hands up, Goodman just tried to pull the trigger through into coverage and almost had it picked off. Dangerous pass. And that's one of the strengths of Bobby Goodman. He's not the type of quarterback that will hurt you with poor decisions. No, we told you he's right up near the top in the country in passing efficiency. Steele and Kirby in the backfield. Goodman tries to escape, but is finally sacked at the 24 by Ashley Shepard. There he is again. Here's a guy. He was a tight end, a wide receiver, a linebacker, a punter in high school. Once ran a post pattern as a receiver, gave it new meaning because he ran right into the post and knocked himself out. But he is a player. Look at this. Watch 96, the right hand of your screen. Fight through the block. He's being held. Still fights that off, breaks the hold, and makes the tackle. Yeah, Jim Reed, the tackle on that side, was holding him like a grudge. Third down, 15. Demetrius Allen in motion and flags on the field. Looked like motion against Clemson. We'll have to figure out what these flags are all about. Looks like Wayne Simmons tried to anticipate the count number 49 and he jumped across 13 career sacks. That's part of the reason he anticipates so well, but this time miscalculated and got caught. We have the defense offsides five yard penalty still first down. Look at the umpire Judge Wampler <laughs> taking us to court today. Absolutely. Watch him now. Here he is trying to anticipate the count. They've been going on a snap count of one most of this game. Here it must have been a later count or at least he changed his cadence. And Simmons jumped across and got caught. They nicknamed Wayne Simmons Big Money. That time it was a big mistake. Well, we've seen him twice now. He's been so aggressive and he's cost him twice big time. Third down and ten for the Cavs. Complete to Aaron Mundy. Up over midfield and into Clemson territory at the 48. A 21-yard pickup. Clemson tried to cheat a little bit. They put Norris Brown, their rover back. They hide him in there like an extra linebacker. That puts the free safety number 15, O'Neal, on the big tight end, Aaron Mundy, who's 6'6". Look at this. He not only had the bigger stride and got a step on him, but also a bigger target. And O'Neal, who's an All-American himself, couldn't catch him. So Clemson gambled, and it cost him. To Aaron Mundy, two receptions so far, but for 47 yards. The give is to Charles Way. Let's go way back to New York and this update from John Saunders. Mark, Illinois and Ohio State, the Buckeyes with a chance to win it. Tim Williams, though, hooks it to the left on the 44-yard attempt, and the Buckeyes lose for the second straight week in the conference, 18-16. Mark. We saw Illinois two weeks ago. It was a shaky club. We're beaten badly by Houston. They've changed quarterbacks, and all of a sudden, look, big, big win today over Ohio State. A turnaround for Lou Tepper and his staff. Terry Kirby up the middle. Down to the 33-yard line. Finally tackled by the safeties, Robert O'Neill and Norris Brown. But another first down after that pickup of 12 yards by Terry Kirby. 
Terry Kirby now just six carries, 36 yards. You've got the feeling he's just ready to explode. The more he carries, the better he gets. Great hole on that side of the line. We've talked about that too, but here was the USA's High School Player of the Year. Great basketball player in the state of Virginia. Played for the Cavaliers here. First down and 10. The reverse to Demetrius Allen, and he reverses the reverse. But he'll lose some yardage on that play back at the 37-yard line, tackled by Eric Jeter. Well, next Saturday, ABC Sports presents a doubleheader first at 12 noon Eastern. Undefeated Powers Clash is number seven Penn State. Well, not undefeated anymore. Hosts Boston College, where Auburn meets Florida. At 12 noon Pacific, UCLA tackles Washington State. Then at 3.30, it's the SEC Game of the Year as Tennessee takes on Alabama. In the Midwest, third-ranked Michigan battles Indiana, or 3.30 Pacific, Cal invades USC. Lots of football action. And if it's not free in your area, call your cable company for the pay-per-view. A fumble on the play, and Clemson may have it. And Virginia was fortunate to get it back. Tim Jones was right there to make the tackle. It was second and 14. Clemson came with a blitz. Forney got great penetration. That brought Tim Jones free. They had an overload. Too many guys, they couldn't stop him. Shepard made the big hit. Ball was loose, and I thought Clemson had it. Big break for Virginia to get it back, but nonetheless, it's now third and 17. Aaron Mundy, the tight end, lines up on the right. Tomlin in motion. Flag down on the play. Kirby on the screen. And he gets back to the 32, far short of the first down tackled by Jones. It is another mistake by Wayne Simmons. For some reason, he's very undisciplined today. 49 is having problems, and he is really, really hurting the defense. Here he jumps, the flag flies, he's off sides, and that is going to give Virginia another big break because on the play, Kirby didn't have enough for the first. Well, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. And for the 22nd year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Wayne Simmons didn't talk to the media for two years. After this, he may not again. Been hanging around Steve Carlton, I guess. Florida rebounding after getting drilled by Mississippi State last week. NC State with a non-conference game and a win. Ashley Shepard appears to be okay. If he can't play, that will really hurt Clemson. A lot of people in town here in Charlottesville, Tim, looking ahead to October 31st in Virginia's game against Florida State, but first they must get by Clemson. So far they've had it the entire game their way. Third and 12. Goodman all day to pass. Complete. He tried to hit number 82, Tyrone Davis, who would have had the first down if he caught it. Norris Brown was right there to break it up. He was open. Goodman did not throw a good pass. Maybe because he felt the heat and tried to scramble, went behind the tackle. Now watch this. It's a little bit behind Davis, and that's the only reason it's broken up because there's no question about it. He was by the corner, or the safety, rather, Norris Brown. So they will punt it. Patrick Hargill Road is standing at midfield on the 50. Robert O'Neill is standing on the 10, and he's going to let this one bounce. And bounce it does. The referee says that it was touched at the 8. And Clemson is pinned back deep in its own territory. Well, I tell you, George Welsh, really low key, as low key as they come. Wears the same face whether he's happy or upset. Well, before George came to Virginia, the Cavaliers never finished in the ACC's top two. But George Welsh has finished second in 84, 87, 88, 90, and won it all in 89. Look at Clemson's upcoming schedule Duke at North Carolina State, then at Wake Forest. They were stacked up immediately. Rudy Harris 
the fullback got the carry that time. Didn't get much yardage either. Well, that was the last play of the first quarter. The Cavaliers having their way so far with the Tigers. We'll be back for the start of the second half, second quarter. In Waiting in the wings, there's Lewis Solomon, the young quarterback who backs up Moncrief. So far, Moncrief's been unable to move him. 13 total yards. They've only had the ball four minutes. It was in the second quarter last week against UT Chattanooga that Solomon came in and just lit up the scoreboard. And the question looms, how long will Hatfield wait? If and when he does replace Moncrief. Here's the toss to Witherspoon, and pardon me, that's Greg Hood who slips it outside on his first carry of the afternoon. A pick of a 14 yards and a first down. That time, Tim, they got to the corner nicely. Well, they've been trying to avoid Slade all day. This time, they do get to the outside. Still, they're not running in his direction. They're going the opposite way. But once they break that containment, he gets outside, and he's got good speed. There's no question that Virginia was waiting for him to go to the wide side of the field, which they do. We talked about that earlier. They go to the tight end or the wide side of the field almost 85, 90 percent of the game. This time they changed him up and surprised the Cavaliers. The backs are Harris and Hood. Moncrief to pass. Batted down by who else? Chris Slade bringing law and order to the football field, and he's shooting them down. Six foot five. Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, puts Slade on the right side because most quarterbacks are right-handed, wants him to come from the back side. Now, if you look at this, you'll see statistically what we talked about. Rushing yards, 13, time of possession, only 430. Look at Virginia. They've had the ball 10 minutes and 30 seconds in this ball game and have 123 total yards. They've dominated thus far. About the only good thing going for Clemson is that they haven't turned the ball over, something they haven't done in the last two ball games. Off this time up to the 24-yard line. That's Greg Hood again. And Tim, one guy we haven't seen so far this afternoon is the former ACC Rookie of the Year, Ronald Williams. Well, we talked at the beginning of the game. He's got that problem with his thigh. He has come back from the knee problem, but he's got a very deep thigh bruise. Hurt his knee last year. He was the first team freshman All-American. Really has not been the same since we saw him get hurt in warm-ups before the NC State game last year. Third down and eight. Trips left. Moncrief, pump fake, incomplete at the 37. Let's go to New York and John Saunders. Mark Allen, Washington, and Napoleon Kaufman watched a little delay here, and then he busts through a wide open hole. From there, look at the speed. Takes it to the end zone, diving in, and they have the lead. Mark. All right, John, it's tough to think of a team that has more depth at running back than Washington. Nelson Welch to punt, and Jared Washington will catch it at midfield, and he's hit immediately at the 49-yard line. Not a great punt by Welch, just 25 yards. Virginia has good field position when we come back. Full afternoon, and not everybody has to buy a ticket to watch this game, huh? You gotta like that. That dorm room comes special. That's a tailgating room. <laughs> Prime time property on a Saturday afternoon here in Charlottesville. Seven nothing. We're just underway here in the second quarter. Terry Kirby on the carry, and he's tackled after a gain of close to two yards. One of the biggest differences in this game, as you look at Terry Kirby, has been Clemson's field position. They've started on their own 16, while Virginia has started an average on their own 36. And here again, they start in Clemson territory. Terry Kirby does so many things. The team's leading receiver, too, averaging seven yards per reception. Come at us out of the eye, and he stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Derek Burnett, inside linebacker, six feet, 213 pounds, just a freshman. They're really high on him. On well, Monday from the nation's capital, get ready for an NFC-AFC showdown between two of pro football's top passers, John Elway and Mark Rippon. 
and the defending Super Bowl champs, the Washington Redskins. Nine Eastern time, and Rippon is struggling a little bit this year. Well, not only that, the Redskins are really banged up as well. Jeff Bostic, the starting center, he's gone for at least 10 games. Bad shoulder. Third down and eight. Goodman tipped, but it's caught by Aaron Mundy. And when you're good, you are lucky, too. That'll be a first down for Virginia. That's three catches now for Aaron Monday, too. He's not a great blocker, but he's got those long legs, and he catches anything thrown at him. This ball is tipped. It's a wobbly dead duck, and yet he still pulls it in. He's an impressive guy, 6'6", 248, and runs like a tailback. 56 yards so far in the afternoon. Backs out of the eye. Goodman dropping back. Going to Davis again. TD. Touchdown. says it was so nice I'll do it twice a second touchdown reception of the afternoon and Houston with the extra point they were kidding when they said that Tyrone Davis was their big play receiver 14 to nothing the Cavaliers lead we'll be right back Team to nothing, and Tyrone Davis has six touchdown receptions after that last one, Tim. Told you about his initials, TD. They say he's the go-to guy. We'll show you why. All the motion goes to the right side, which holds up 15 O'Neal, the safety. He can't get over there, so it's one-on-one -on -one with Trapp and Davis. Now, look at this. Davis is 6'5", Trapp is 6' foot, plus a 28-inch vertical leap by Davis, and he pulls that touchdown down. He is an impressive guy as well. You see why this offense is so explosive. Davis now two catches, 70 yards, and two touchdowns. Told you they've scored at least 50 points in three different games. And they're up quickly on Clemson. You talked earlier, Tim, about him reminding you of uh, Herman Moore. He must have heard you. Making some big plays just like his predecessor. You know, Clemson really has a banged up secondary. James Trapp has that neck injury. Jeter and Norris Brown have ankle problems. They've all missed practice this week. And it's showing right now. Yeah, defensive coordinator of Clemson, Ron Dickerson, expressed his apprehension about the situation in the secondary. Trapp's neck problem will only get worse if he keeps looking around watching receivers run by. No shot for Andre Humphrey on Michael Houston's kickoff. I tell you, Tab Virginia shows up en masse every home game here in Charlottesville, Virginia. And there's a look at Mr. Chris Slade. Yeah, whose dad do you think he is? Wearing the school colors. He'll be watching his son play on Sundays next year. Back side of the eye, and we have a new quarterback, Lewis Solomon. And he's tackled by Greg Hood. Well, it didn't take long to get Solomon in the ballgame. We alluded to this on the last series. Solomon gives him much more speed in there. Seven runs for 69 yards last week. He likes to keep it. Here he doesn't. And the result? Bang, bang. Shoot him down. A loss of one on first down, second and 11. Watch Solomon jack this thing up, though, and try to hit the corner. They say that he runs the option well. Tim, he heard you, and he's got a man open. It's incomplete, out of bounds. Terry Smith caught it, but the official says he was out of bounds. Well, I've got to see that. The Clemson coaches right there on the sideline are furious. The call would have to be he was bobbling the ball, but look at that. Smith says he caught it. It was Smith on Smith down the far sideline. Terry Smith 
52 catches last year, 10 this year. He's got the step. Here comes the ball now. All right, he is bobbling it here, but he's still in bounds. He's got that football. He's pushed out of bounds. That's a catch. That's a bad call by the side judge. That's a catch. Clemson gets robbed there. Watch this now. Pull it in. He's got the football. They push him out of bounds. If a defender forces a receiver out of bounds, that's a catch. Ken Hatfield has a good argument on that one. Yes, he does. No replay, obviously, in college football. They blew that one. How dare you say that R-word? <laughs> well, they can talk all they want about it, but it'll come back to the line of scrimmage, and it'll be third down in 11. Clemson took a timeout to argue their case. They're down to one timeout now in this half. Kenny Hatfield in his third season as head coach at Clemson. I'll tell you something about that timeout. It was a timeout really to get his point made to the officials. All right, that could come back later. The official may have in the back of his mind maybe the subconscious. So that could help him somewhere down the line. I'm not sure. But more importantly, he's got a timeout to settle Smith down, settle the offense. All right, you're on the road. You get a bad call. It's a good timeout. Got to get some kind of momentum going in their favor. They trail 14-0 tonight on ABC. Action, adventure from a new time and play. Ken Hatfield has the dubious distinction, Tim, of being the only Clemson head coach ever to lose to Virginia. Not only lose, Kenny Hatfield's record is 0-1-1 against Virginia. And his team hurt booze last week after drilling UT Chattanooga 54-3. Figure that out. Hood and Greer in the backfield. Screen pass to Hood at the 25. And it looked like everyone on the Virginia defense had a shot at him. That play took forever to develop. Solomon kind of lobbed it up there on the pass. Hood didn't know whether to call for a fair catch or not. Watch this. Solomon's a little bit inexperienced, drops back, but he's got to throw it high to get it over the, the head of McCaskey, who's 6'4". Finally does. Now, Hood, this is a great bit of running right here. He didn't make much yardage, but just the balance that he showed. And Slade was in the area, too. Here's Jared Washington at the 37. And he returns it to the 47-yard line, and there's a late flag on the play. It's going to be a clip against Virginia. Not only was it late and unnecessary, but it was definitely flagrant, and it was right in the, the, the face of the official. Well, Tim, they would have had great field position. Now it'll come back just a touch. That's why it's a mental error. You can't make that. It's a 44-yard punt and an 11-yard return. Here's the call from the official. We have an illegal, illegal block in the back during the run back. It's a 10-yard penalty. Just a spectacular day in Charlottesville, Virginia. We are on the lawn at the President's School. Had a chance to take a look at the campus, and it is a gorgeous one. Got a timeout down on the field, and now they start the clock. First down and 10, Kirby and Steele in the backfield. Slot left for Virginia. Hands off to Terry Kirby up the middle. Uh, Virginia has a very distinguished reputation for academics, and we see some of the graduate students on the squad, including the quarterback, Bobby Goodman. Michael Houston, Charles Kennington, Keeningham, sorry, Kenneth Miles, and Gary Steele. Four-digit SATs allowed only. Second and seven, here's Goodman. Of Kirby. Nice catch. Terry Kirby is a piece of work. First down, Virginia, after a 29 yard pickup. Nor 
Morris Brown and Michael Barber making the tackle that time, too. First, it's Goodman, though. He looks downfield. He's looking for Allen, but he's covered. Pulls it down. Now, watch this. Just a little shuffle pass, and he gets it to Kirby. Now, look at the one hand grab by Kirby. There may be a better running back in the country. There may be a better receiver, but I don't think there's anybody in the country that can do it all as well as he does. Some of that dexterity, and here he is off tackle that time, down to the 22-yard line. Boy, does he run hard. Norris Brown and Michael Barber made the tackle. 11 carries, 50 yards now for him. You see the numbers he's got receiving. He goes over the 100-yard, or the 100 reception mark now for his career. Most ever by a running back here at this school. Seven pounds, nine ounces at birth. Now a solid sculpted 218. Cannot tell you how close he came to almost going to Penn State. The gift this time is to Gary Steele, who gets his first carry of the day, and he's over the 20 down to the 19 and a half. Steele is a little bit banged up, but he is overshadowed, overlooked, and underappreciated as a back. You know, to go back to Terry Kirby for a second, there's so much Heisman talk, and we talked about Marshall Falk being the attention getter. But let me tell you this, Kirby averages 20 carries a game compared to Marshall Falk, who gets 35 a game. Now George Welch had some interesting things in terms of a message for the Heisman voters about Terry Kirby. Goodman into the end zone, touchdown! Patrick Jeffers makes it 20 to nothing, Cavaliers. Jeffers, 400-meter track guy, didn't lose a race in two years. A walk-on. UVA started a walk-on at wide receiver in each of the past six seasons. How about that? And as we were talking about graduate students and SAT scores, Patrick Jeffers' SAT was 13-10. And the score is in favor of Virginia right now. We'll be right back. Quarterback Bobby Goodman has improved so much over the last two years behind Sean Moore and Matt Blunden. Look at this. First of all, there's great protection, but he steps right up in there and throws it out to Patrick Jeffers, who makes the reception. Never a letterman named Jefferson here at Jefferson University, but I'll tell you, Jeffers has that Jeffersonian connection. Look at this. A walk-on. We told you that. Derek Dooley. Vince Dooley's son played here. He was a walk-on. He's the guy who recruited Jeffers because he was dating his sister. Said, hey, listen, if I could play there, you could play there. And look at Goodman's reaction. Package deal, huh? Second in the nation in passing efficiency, and he has been some kind of sharp here today. Eight for 12, 185 yards. And now, Tim, 18 touchdown passes on the season for him. Bobby, be good. Tell you what, that Florida State game is shaping up to be a good one. Well, October 31st, mark it down. Halloween. Five yards deep in the end zone to Andre Humphrey. He'll think better of it. It's not like Clemson has had great field position this afternoon either. Well, coming up at halftime, John Saunders with lots of scores and highlights from a busy day in college football this Saturday afternoon and a report on the Miami Penn State game two weeks in a row Miami has won a close one Clemson started three times from the 20 one from the eight they have been backed up the whole time see if Solomon a new quarterback can generate anything this is his second series first and ten he'll run it himself and Lewis Solomon puts his hat down and puts it on a Clemson on a uh, Virginia player, in particular Keith Lyle. He picks up the first down, carrying it for 15 yards. Well, he had seven carries for 69 yards last week against UT Chattanooga. He will not hesitate to run it, sometimes maybe too quickly, because here he was going to pass. Instead of looking off the first receiver to the second, he just tucked it away and went. This time it paid off. He's young. He's inexperienced. But he's very talented. Four possessions, four punts. That won't get you much. Cup of coffee. Solomon rolls out to pass this time, and Keith Lyle, the strong safety, came up and batted it down. Stumped him at the line of scrimmage. See, 
same experience we were talking about. Lyle came on the safety blitz. He's really got to come up quickly anyway all day to support the option. But here's a guy that comes up and just, they say, never leave your feet. I think he banked on the inexperience that he was going to throw it, did leave his feet, and batted it away. His dad played for the Bears. Remember Gary Lyle? Mm -hmm. His brother plays for Richmond. The wood is burning and the wheels are turning for Kenneth Hatfield. He's got to figure something out. We have 8.07 to go in the first half, and they are down 21 to nothing. Play action. Nice fake that time by Solomon, and he's out to the 42-yard line. Got a defender up in the air and ran right by him. Yeah, I'm laughing because Lyle backed on the inexperience and left his feet and blocked it away. Hey, listen, once burnt, twice learnt. This time... He's got uh, 43 there, Burns, who's an outstanding student. He banks on his inexperience, and it's the youngster Solomon that takes him to school. Put him in the old popcorn machine, huh? What's Burns have? A 3.9 GPA, great point average. Guy's been splitting more atoms than maybe practice time. <laughs> Don't leave your feet. He takes those courses that you can't even pronounce. Third down and four. Be close to a first down, Rodney Blunt. And this might come down to a measurement. Looks like he's a little bit short. See, now I'd go for it here. You're 21 points down with seven minutes to go in the first half. I'd gamble a little bit. I'd try to challenge my team and go after it on fourth down. Well, it looks like that's what Ken Hatfield is going to do. Not a high percentage play at midfield, but at this point, 21 down, who cares about percentages? It's time to get with the program. Full house backfield. I wouldn't even risk a handoff. I'd let Solomon take it. He does. And that's what happens, and there's a fumble, and Virginia says they have it. Virginia's ball. Kenny Hatfield just has to shake his head. Solomon comes over and says, hey, bad snap. You don't want to risk a handoff. You want a, a good, solid athlete just to keep it, quarterback sneak it, and get the first. But watch this. The snap comes up. He's juggling it right now. Ball's on the ground. See it there? Everybody fights for it. A lineman's going to get it away from Solomon. Just going to outmuscle him down at the bottom. It's usually the guy that has the, the strength and the wrestling ability to pull that away that gets the fumble. Maybe a little inexperience on the part of the freshman. Look at these turnovers. Five fumbles, two interceptions. And 21 love on the scoreboard. Terry Kirby. Boy, does he have some moves. Made something out of nothing down to the 43-yard line. Just showed you that graphic that shows that they don't turn the ball over much. As a matter of fact, Clemson had gone 174 plays without a turnover before that fumble. That's why we said that Moncrief was quarterbacking in the first place because he doesn't turn it over. And on only a second series, Solomon does as we take another look at Terry Kirby. Count the tackles he breaks. One, two, three tackles on that one run. That's Tomlin in motion. The rollout flags down Gary Steele. And Steele is written out of bounds hard at the 40-yard line by Darnell Stevens, the strong safety. But we'll have to see what these flags are all about. I can tell you what it is. The Tigers are completely out of whack. They jumped across and came off sides again. It's going to go against Clemson. Unless they were drawn, Kenny's saying, hey, we were drawn all sides. He's yelling at his defense to watch the football. See, they're anticipating and going on sound rather than watching the football. Penalty for offsides is on the defense. Not too happy about that. Well, some of the guys thought they had an, an audible. I mean, they could hear things audibly got Virginia into a rhythm and they thought they could anticipate it. Now Virginia's changed that up and that's why Kenny Hatfield's saying watch the football, forget sound. When that football moves, you move, not until. Well, you think they would have learned by now with 544 to go in the first half. Back shot of the eye, trips right formation for Virginia. Terry Kirby 
looking for his hole and exploding down to the 25. Darnell Stevens again making the tackle, but not before a pickup of 13 yards by Kirby. You cannot teach what he just did on this play. The handoff is straight. Now watch Kirby. Stutter step, slow down, wait for the hole to develop, wait for your blocks, and then explode through it. He goes to the next speed. That's instinct. You don't teach that. Tim, that's exactly what Welch said he improved at over the last year, is being able to see the hole a little better in his vision. Yeah, well, see, George wanted to say it was coaching. <laughs> now here's a run that's not coaching. That's Terry Kirby. Live down to the seven-yard line, 19 yards of real estate that time. Norris Brown and Eric Jeter made the tackle. Boy, you don't want to analyze him. You want to admire him. He's good size. He's quick. He's straight away. Speed has improved. His balance is sensational for a man six foot three, 218 pounds. You're seeing flashes now of why he was the high school player of the year in the country. First and goal from the six. Who else? This time, hit hard. You know, I've never been one not to be outspoken. I'm going to tell you right now, this is the Rodney Dangerfield of college football. I don't know why he has not gotten more attention than he has. Well, it's going to be interesting to see which way the voters sway on this. Because there's no question that Terry Kirby is a legitimate Heisman candidate. Well, he's so versatile. That's the key. And the fans appreciate it. Look, he comes out of the game, they give him a standing O. You'd think he'd want to stay in to hit pay dirt on this if in fact they do get that far. 15 rushes, 86 yards this afternoon. With four minutes to go in the half. Getting the J-O-B-D-O-N-E. Goodman. And another touchdown, and Terrence Tomlin is in the house. Virginia seriously now something's wrong here's another track guy Tomlin was a wishbone quarterback but again it's Goodman that makes this thing go drifts looks finally waits Tomlin clears the linebacker and he puts it right there yeah, Tomlin had a hamstring problem earlier in the season slowed him down a little bit former wishbone quarterback as I said but fine catch Houston with the extra point and Tim you can really see why Bobby Goodman is the second highest rated passer in the country. Great decision making. And a 28-0 lead for the Cavaliers. Well, Marshall Falk might be the greatest, but Terry Kirby might be the latest. Here's what Coach George Welsh had to say about the race. Well, I just hope that uh, the voters, if they're considering running backs, that they wait until the 11th game or so, 10th game anyway, before they make up their minds because um, Terry Kirby has not been on television. And maybe that's part of it. And he shared the he shared the job for two years here, so we didn't get a lot of carries, but he's carrying the ball 20 plus times now. I think when people see him, they'll appreciate what kind of a talent he is. Hey, he's got a game made for television. Well, you had Marcus Wilson here, you had Nikki Fisher here, and it never really was Kirby's by himself. Now here he is, he's, he's in the game, it's his game. He's the guy, he's the leader. He gets the ball almost all the time now, although we said not nearly as much as Marshall Falk. He's got a little bit of a dinger on his shoulder. Hey, Superman had kryptonite, right? Terry Kirby from Tab High School in Tab, Virginia. He'll graduate on time too in December. He's a psychology major. Houston's kickoff is just like the ones before. Deep, and this one goes out of the end zone. Well, what do you tell a freshman to do at this point, Tim Brent? You've had three possessions. Haven't had put any points on the board. 
Well, basically just maintain your composure. We told you they had the fumble first time in 174 plays, but you have to remember you've got a freshman quarterback, you have your backup center, so there's going to be some some problems with the battery, the, the, the exchange, and they had that, but it's more than that. I mean, this team right now is just out of sync, and they're being overpowered by the Cavaliers. One for six passing combined for one yard. Counted one yard. Rodney Blunt on the carry. Tackled that time by Killian and Ryan Keel. It'll be second down and eight now for Clemson. Terps up on Georgia Tech scored a lot of points here last couple of weeks. And this is amazing. Illinois over Ohio State. We saw Illinois get blasted by Houston a couple of weeks ago. And how do you figure out Ohio State after beating Syracuse in Syracuse? That's out of the eye. Solomon will pass, and I tell you, Manuk Bull wouldn't have been able to catch that one. Terry Smith was the intended receiver, and Solomon says in the jargon, my bad, my fault. Way things are going, we may see another freshman quarterback, Patrick Sapp. He's the youngster out of Jacksonville, Florida, the best passer on Clemson's team. Dwayne Bryant checks out for Clemson. And Terry Smith will be split to the wide side of the field. A whistle and a timeout Clemson. You know who called that time? Looked like Jason Davis, the outside receiver. He looked up and saw the play clock down to two seconds and called a timeout. And that was Clemson's last one. 3.05 remaining in the first half. And Clemson hasn't hit the scoreboard. You know, we're speculating on quarterbacks, Moncrief, and then Solomon, and we also mentioned Sapp. It's never really been one of the strong points at, the, at Clemson University. You know, in 39 years, Clemson has had only six all-conference quarterbacks, Steve Fuller probably the most noted, but none have made it in the National Football League. Last time they won a championship, Homer Jordan, I believe, was the starting quarterback, Tim, and he ended up playing in the Canadian Football League, the Saskatchewan Rough Run. Well, that's exactly right. He's one of the six that did make all-conference over that period of time. They haven't had many. Clemson with only 56 yards of offense. Listen to these Virginia fans. Takes the dive and is up to the 33-yard line. I can hear everybody now in South Bend, Indiana, cheering for Howard Hall. Why? Well, there's a Howard Hall, which is a female dormitory at Notre Dame. So all those women there have adopted Howard Hall as their hero, their mascot. His picture's on the wall in Howard Hall. Man of the hour. <laughs> and that's Patrick Sapp, the third-string quarterback we were referring to just a few moments ago. He's 6'4", 235, and Tim, as you said, might be the best passer of the group. Speaking of pass, speaking of running, Solomon tackled at the 36. Met there by Gene Tolliver, outside linebacker for Virginia. See the big block cut down Mike Frederick, the defensive end, 95. He got up and tried to make it, but he couldn't do it. He was still off balance, so that allowed for the big run. One of the main concerns for Virginia was shutting down that Clemson power game. So far, they've done the job. On the option, Solomon could score. And he will. Lewis Solomon, like a shot of lightning, takes it 64 yards for the touchdown. Wow. What a fake. Did he ever sell it? He's almost got 100 yards now on five carries. Again, it's the option. They go to the option with him. We told you he had 64 yards last week. Now, McClellan, the offside cornerback, had a shot 
and had the proper pursuit angle, he got cut off by the back judge, which is part of the field, but ran into the official, and Solomon goes all the way. Can't tell you what a big boost that is for Clemson to get a score. A huge score as we have 153 remaining in the first half. We'll be right back. I'm Al Michaels. Join us this Monday for Monday Night Football. It's always a special treat to go to RFK Stadium in Washington. And this week, the Denver Broncos with John Elway, who pulled off some last-minute magic again last Sunday against Kansas City, taking on the Super Bowl champion Redskins. Denver, Washington on Monday Night Football. The first presidential debate. Why watch it here? Peter Jennings and the people of ABC News. That's why. The presidential debate, live Sunday. Back at Charlottesville, Virginia, Mark Jones and Tim Brent in the house, and Lewis Solomon took it into the house. 64 yards. That was Clemson's longest run from scrimmage this season, Tim. Well, put Patrick Sapp back on the shelf for a while because Lewis Solomon has really generated something here, and at least he's generated hope. It's 28 to 7. I mean, we're not going to create false illusions, but that will at least give Clemson some hope with 153 left in the half. He really sold that play, too. Terrific fake to Howard Hall. Put it right in the gut of the fullback and took it out. Sabe will kick it off and back deep. Jared Washington and Kevin Brooks. In a first half that has been all Virginia except for that last play by Clemson. A fumble. And Clemson has it back. Hold on here. Let's play a little football here. Looked like it was recovered by Derek Burnett. Washington got popped at about the 22-yard line. And now there's a flag on the field. A little extracurricular. Watch this now. Here comes the return. First of all, it's the hit that makes this thing fly. Watch this. Tuck that tail, scout the eyes. Bam! Knock that thing out. The helmet hit the ball. Terrific lick by Andre Humphrey. Now it's loose. And here comes Ed Houskin, he recovers it. Then there's some extracurricular, and that will go against Clemson. So you've got to maintain your composure even after big plays. Well, they've got 146 on the clock. We'll think about what they'll we do We have after a dead this. ball foul. After the change of team possession, personal foul. It's on the team that recovered the fumble. It'll be first and 25. George Welsh being a naval academy guy won't like that. Pardon me, he'll take it anyway. Hatfield won't like it. And he shouldn't like it. Forget the turnovers for a second. Just look at the penalties and the mental mistakes that Clemson's been making. That's five penalties for 35 yards. I mean, they get a big breakdown here. They've got the ball in Virginia territory, and they hurt themselves. You can't be crying and say, all right, Terry Smith made that catch, and they took it away from us. Forget the officials. The players are making mental mistakes. We've seen a lot of them this afternoon. Side especially. Well, with 146, they've still got to be thinking touchdown. Solomon back to pass and sacked. Back at the 47 yard line by Chris Slade with a six shooter. Like a candle snuffer. Comes in, there's hope, and he dashes it. Because Weatherspoon came into the ball game, Derek Weatherspoon, number 31. When he does, normally going to pass, and he was wide open. No huddle now for Clemson on second down and 23. Here he comes, backside pressure again. They're looking for the screen, and it didn't happen. Hey, they're going in the wrong direction. Sacked back at the 35. They started about the 25 in Virginia territory. Now they're all the way back near the 35. Tell you, we had one official get sacked on that play. I'm telling you, Virginia's tackling everybody. The official bridge bomb that time with the pressure. And we have an official down on the far sideline. That's a tough job. You know, every year the players get bigger, stronger, faster. Officials part of the field. 
<laughs> Not literally though. He ended up on the field. He did end up part of the field got run over. Dale Phillips the referee just got drilled. Had his feelings loosened his eyeballs rolled up in his forehead but appears to be all right now. I guess slobber knocker man the guy took a slobber knocker on the sidelines. I guess he's lost a step huh. Nice to see he's back up and OK though. And speaking of backing up. Clemson now back at the 35 yard line. It's third down and Richmond to go. They've lost almost 40 yards in the last couple of plays. Greg Hood in the backfield Solomon looking deep for Larry Ryans and it's batted down at the 28 yard line. Good coverage that time by the Virginia secondary. Well it was a zone and the strong safety Keith Lyle just tripped it over. He read Goodman all I mean uh, Solomon all the way and just knocked it away almost picked it off. All right, look, he's looking to the right side right now at Ryan's. Never comes off of him. So if you're the strong safety, you start leaving that way. You start going. Watch 25 now. He comes over and almost has the interception. And Wardloff, number three, he comes trying to come lately. Ball almost did him in the face. Washington back on the 25. Welch punting. He's punted a lot this afternoon. Too much for Hatfield. This is a returnable punt. Washington juking and jiving his way up to the 42 40 yard punt and a 17 yard return. We would now like to pause five seconds to allow our ABC stations to identify themselves. Mark Jones and Tim Brand in Charlottesville, University of Virginia, Scott Stadium, 28 to 7 for Virginia. It's been all Cavaliers in the first half. And Terry Kirby has been working overtime too. Carries it out to the 47 yard line tackled by Brenton Buckner and Warren Forney. 16 rushes 90 yards but he's limping now off the field. Looks like it's his right leg. Virginia takes a timeout too. They don't want to take any chances. They've got all of their timeouts so they take one here that'll give them two with 16 seconds ago so it's it's just a caution flag they're sending up boy what about these two guys since birth pretty much friends good friends they played together for the first time in 1979 on the Grafton Raiders well down near Tab Virginia where they did grow up they're naming roads after Slade and Kirby matter of fact there is already a Kirby Lane and now near the facility where they were little kids growing up the youth center they're going to have Chris Chase and Kirby run will be the two <laughs> that, I'm not kidding those are going to be they're going to name two roads after them. Chris Chase and Kirby run very apropos I tell you when they were in uh, public school they wouldn't even let them play on the same team sometimes said it was an unfair advantage multi-sport athletes both of them the way this game's going they may choose up new sides Goodman steps out of bounds at the 49 and stops the clock with Bobby eight Goodman ticks to go comes out of bounds. Now Bobby Goodman has been a very effective cog in this Virginia machine in the first half really impressed with his composure in the pocket. Now we talked about how only six Clemson quarterbacks over the last 39 years have made all conference at Virginia on the other hand they've got quarterbacks in the NFL like Don Mikowski and Scott Seacules Sean Moore Matt Blunden all four NFL guys. Now here comes Bobby Goodman had a chance to see Blunden in the Kansas City Chiefs training camp when I was up there and they're really high on him. And that'll be the last play of the first half. And speaking of Goodman, he tied a school record with four touchdown passes in the first half. So you know, who knows? Maybe Sundays are a possibility for him. Terry Ryan's called a timeout with two seconds left, so Virginia is going to have one more play. That won't make that guy very happy, Kenny Hatfield. He said, "Come on, guys." But as George Wells told us. Never count Clemson out of a game. For some reason, 
you know, you, you don't have the game won in college football until the last five or six minutes if you're up by three touchdowns. And last week, Tim, Clemson, uh, pardon me, Virginia did let up a little bit against Wake Forest. I don't think George actually called this timeout. I mean, when Ryans did this on his, on his own, or, t or uh, Demetrius Allen, rather. Goodman, 9 of 13, 189 yards and four touchdowns in just 30 minutes. Ken Hatfield's team trying to stop themselves from sliding. They came in 0 and 2 in the conference. We talked about Virginia's dominance here at Scott Stadium over the past few years. 5 and 0 in 87, undefeated, undefeated in 89. And in 91, and so far, 2-0, and maybe 3-0 and after this one. Boy, how things have changed. I remember in the 70s and early 80s, teams wish they could come here every week to play Virginia. <laughs> no more doormats. Goodman out of the shotgun. They'll just throw it up. Well, there's a flag down in the end zone. Let's see. There was incomplete. There were about a dozen players in the end zone around the ball. Tom O'Brien, Virginia's offensive coordinator, is already calling the other play. But it looks like it's going to be, well, they're going to call offensive pass interference against Virginia. And Clemson says that they will we have up. deny the penalty. We've had enough. Let's take it in. Goodman puts it up. You see that the secondary has the position. And it's the orange jerseys from Virginia that are pushing and shoving from behind. Well, it was a record-setting first half for Virginia as they lead 28-7. Goodman, the quarterback, tied a school record with four touchdown passes in the first half. That's it for the first half. We'll see you in a bit. Back on the campus of the University of Virginia, Mark Jones, along with Tim Brandt, we're at halftime, and Virginia leads Clemson in this ACC battle. Virginia unbeaten coming into the ACC at 4-0. They lead 28-7, and Tim, so far, it's been a situation where Virginia has dominated offensively. Bobby Goodman at quarterback, Tyrone Davis, the big play receiver. Well, Goodman, 9 for 14, 189 yards and four touchdowns. Tyrone Davis caught two of those. He has two catches, 70 yards and two touchdowns. The first one really got Clemson, or uh, UVA going, 33-yard reception. And Goodman really sold the, sold the play well. Watch this now, because everybody's looking for Kirby. Now, here comes the second touchdown. Again, they're looking for Kirby. They roll out behind him. Now they throw back to the backside using Davis's height he's six foot five against James Trapp number 27 who's just barely six feet he goes up and just pulls it down right over top of him so Tyrone Davis with two touchdown catches early on Tyrone Davis led the team as a freshman last year in receiving and he came back for another one and made it 14 to nothing for UVA and Patrick Jeffers got in the action that's Jeffers only catch of the day he's a walk-on but it was a big one and that 20 yard touchdown that was 14 nothing or 21 really at that point and then Terrence Tomlin got into the act to make it 28 to nothing Bobby Goodman with four touchdown passes in the first half that is a school record tying a school record actually in the first half of play and then finally Lewis Solomon saved a little face in the first half for Clemson. Well, he did. He came in and challenged the corners. He had seven runs for 71 yards, including that long 64-yard touchdown run. Just one for five passing, but watch how he sells this with the fake to Howard Hall. Frederick, number 95, just came inside, which left the corner wide open. There was nobody then assigned to the quarterback. And he just turned it up for 64 yards. So he does put some life into the Clemson offense. Seven runs, 71 yards. That'll do it. He had 64 yards running last week against UT Chattanooga. And Tim, when you look at the halftime statistics, one thing is troubling for the Clemson Tigers. They're not a great team when it comes to coming from behind and playing from behind. Uh, they have one yard passing in the first half. 
not too impressive. Well, I disagree with you. I think there's more than one thing troubling Clemson. <laughs> They've had a lot of problems in this first half. Look at the, look at the time of possession. Look at total yardage. Turnovers didn't hurt them, but I mean, it, it, Terry Kirby. Look at him. He's got. 16 carries, 90 yards. How do you slow him down? I mean, it has been Virginia dominating, except for Solomon's run. It's been all Cavaliers. Well, Clemson, as we mentioned, 0-2 in the conference coming in. They have never started an ACC conference year 0-3, and, and that looms large right now as they trail 28-7 at halftime. And if you're Ken Hatfield, what do you do for the second half? Do you go to your third string quarterback? Do you stay with Solomon? Well, the first thing you better do is shore up your defense. And yes, I would stay with Solomon. You realize Clemson in the last 43 games has had only two backs gain 100 yards against them. And now Kirby's just 10 yards from that in the first half. We'll get our answers in the third quarter. Right now, let's kick it back to New York. Time report with a look at some more scores on this Saturday of college football. in Charlottesville, Virginia. Virginia leads Clemson 28-7 at halftime by virtue of four Bobby Goodman touchdown passes. We'll have more in a minute. CFA College Football. This ADC Sports Exclusive. Brought to you by American Honda, who has been making quality cars in America for the past 10 years. And by Hitachi. Hitachi makes over 20,000 innovative products. Back in Charlottesville, Virginia, Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt. And it has been all Cavaliers in the first half. Terry Kirby has become the fourth player in ACC history to rush for over 3,000 yards and have 100 receptions. You see what he's done today, 90 yards. And keep in mind, Clemson has had only two players in the last 40-some games to go over 100 yards. Terry Kirby has 90 in the first half. He was a little shaken up towards the end of the first half. He's all right, dinged up shoulder, a little bruised knee, but he says he wants to go. He Bert says, he says there's a lot riding on the exposure he's getting today. And he's oh, yeah. right. There's some ballots to be voted on. This has been the story all afternoon. Houston's kickoffs have gone deep into the end zone on every occasion. As we look at the offensive leaders in Cle uh, for Clemson, add that up and it's one for eight combined between Moncrief and Solomon. One, count yep. it, one yard passing. But that really doesn't matter because Clemson's not a passing team. The big thing is they haven't been able to run the football. Now, because of the score, they're forced to pass and you realize that uh, Clemson's never come back from this type of deficit to win a football game. As you look at Virginia and what they've done, Slade, of course, he's ready to turn it loose now. And his ears back and here he comes, got just one sack. Maybe now an opportunity to pack those stats. He's a Lombardi candidate nominee. And here is Blunt. Rodney Blunt pushed out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. And now they back it up to the 33. A pickup of 13 and a first down for the Tigers. Boy, a terrific block on the corner, though. Watch this. Once he gets out here. Now watch the block come from the wide receiver. Just pushes it. The contained man out of bounds that allows Blunt to turn it up. So most of their success, surprisingly, has come on the perimeter rather than up the middle. Well, that's not really surprising. Well, Virginia was afraid of the power game. Right, but remember their center went out. And when they did that, then they had to adjust and go to the outside. The pass complete to Terry Smith, and he makes something of it. 
pushed out at the 45 and another first down for the Tigers a pickup of 22 for Terry Smith the team's leading receiver Clemson traditionally has been a, a perimeter team they like to get to the outside today they were going to try to go up the middle but Harris was hurt so here now they come back outside look at Solomon gets the ball out there right now bang Wordlaw had no chance, missed the tackle, didn't break down and come under control, and they get the big game. That's what made it a close game for Virginia last week against Wake Forest. Shoddy tackling in the second half. Here's Rodney Blunt with lots of real estate. And he's down to the 33. A pickup of 12, three plays, three first downs for Clemson. Hey, we came to play. Already, this is the best drive they've had other than the big break, 64-yard touchdown. But look at the blocking, trap blocking. They crisscross. They open the hole. That hole was huge. I think Blunt was shocked. That, look at this hole. <laughs> Got into the secondary. Dare I say that you or I could have run through that? No, don't say that. Okay, first and 10 anyway. Rodney Blunt again on the job. Down to the 25-yard line. Clemson coming out with fire in their collective bellies here in the second half. Randy Neal made the tackle from his linebacking spot for Virginia. Rodney Blunt, they call him Rock from Pensacola, Florida. 5'10", 190, a junior. And we have yet to see from Ronald Williams anything this afternoon. Clemson has had some rallies in the second half before. Yeah, but this would have to be the biggest ever. Out of the eye, a handoff to the up back. That's Rudy Harris. Harris, an interesting story, Tim. Uh, he had a three-game suspension earlier. Well, he set out the three games for that suspension. He is a, a quality running back, second leading rusher in 1990. 6'2", 245-pound senior. Signed with an agent and was forced by the NCAA to sit out three games. Well, that's right. He was going to leave early. Some of the agent decided not to. Now, we remember Braxton Banks at Notre Dame. He did that, went up, saw that he wasn't going to go as high as he wanted to try to get back in, had to sit out the whole school year. Tough spot for a youngster, and here he is again. Harris piled up at the 17-yard line. So Clemson pounding away at Virginia early here in the third quarter of play. P.J. Killian made the tackle. Rudy Harris last week had a couple of touchdowns in that 54-3 win over UT Chattanooga. Remember P.J. Killian's dad played at Pitt. A lot of good bloodlines with that Virginia team. Harrison Blunt out of the eye. Two tight ends. And there's a fumble. Lyles got it, returns it. And when we brag about the lack of turnovers, they come out and they've got some big ones. That thing flew out of there. Best drive of the day. Ball pops out and Lyle picks it out in the air. If there's a look to a snake bit coach, that was it by Ken Hatfield. See how this thing came out of there. Because it did fly. Watch Neal, number nine just strips him, the linebacker, just pulls his arm away. Here comes 25, Lyle, picks it off in the air just like an interception. He's got the pick. Boy, you talk about room service. That was it. Clemson with its second turnover of the day. And Bobby Goodman hands it off to Terry Kirby. And just like the runs before, that one is about eight yards long over the 25 to the 27-yard line. Came into the game averaging 150 per now has 98. A lot of NFL scouts here today, and Bobby Bethard is one. As you look at the Virginia offensive leaders, Bobby Bethard of the Chargers was here. We said, Bobby, what's, who does Kirby remind you of? He says, that's a tough one. His style is so different than anybody he's seen, he can't compare him to another running back. And the running backs come out of the eye. This is Charles Way, who stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. And to get back to that point, Tim, that you started, about Barry Word as we look at some extracurricular activity. I mean, pardon me, our man uh, Kirby, he's not exactly a Barry Word either. Word had more strength and really hit you. Kirby more of a finesse guy. Well, I don't know how you can measure that. I, I've seen guys here today bouncing off Kirby like he's a brick wall. The guy is strong, he is big, 6'3", 220 pounds. 
Third down and one. Mr. Reliable with the first down for the Cavaliers. I know what you're saying about Barry Word, though, and I think both of us walked into that weight room yesterday and looked up at that wall and saw that he was bench pressing 400 some pounds when he was here at Virginia. You understand why he's had that success in the NFL. Yeah, you talk about a very big, illustrious 400 club. This is what we were telling you. White and Kroon were the only guys in the last 43 games. Now they play this one, the 44th, and Terry Kirby jumps up, and he does it in just over a half. Now, Russell White had his 103 last year in the Citrus Bowl against Clemson. 10-51 and counting to go in the third quarter. Slot right, Goodman drops back, and he's got a man wide open. Demetrius Allen drops it at the 25. The freshman, just 151 pounds soaking wet, should have, could have held on to that catch. Robert O'Neill, the All-American safety, providing the coverage that time for the Tigers. Remember when wide receiver Larry Holmes dropped out of school unexpectedly, he had some problems, so Demetrius Allen jumped into his spot, number 20. He started every game, not even five months out of Granby High School. Here he is out of Norfolk, Virginia. So he's young, he's learning. That ball should have been caught. Terry Kirby on the draw that time. Over the 30 down to the 31-yard line. Demetrius Allen, we were sitting in that meeting yesterday, and Tom O'Brien, the offensive coordinator, kept saying, and we keep going to Petey, we keep going to Pete. And I'm thinking, who in the heck is Pete? <laughs> but that's what they call Demetrius Allen. They call him Pete, Petey. Yeah, you know, in uh, training camp, he had trouble dropping passes, and after a long while, they finally figured out that he needed contact lenses. And he had nine receptions for 163 yards coming into this game. Plus soft lens. Goodman in and out of the arms of his tight end, Aaron Mundy. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I can't help but think back of that huge lead that Miami had on Maryland that year when Maryland came back and beat them. They were down like 35, 40 points. Biggest comeback in NCAA. What happens when you have that lead is you get a little bit sloppy. You take that edge off. And then right now, Virginia looks like they've lost that edge a little bit. Clemson jammed the ball right down their throats, gave it back on a fumble. Now the defense holds. And their offense will get another shot. Harkle Rhodes punt to Robert O'Neill. Good field position at the 38-yard line. And that's where Solomon will take the reins. A 32-yard punt. We're going to take a break. And as we do, the historic rotunda forms one spectacular end of one of Jefferson's most inspired creations on the grounds of Virginia, the Academic Village, or the Lawn. Back in Charlottesville, Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt on a beautiful sunny fall afternoon. The score, Virginia leading Clemson 28 to 7. And the man in the sweater and glasses, a famous last name, Jay Paterno, son of Penn State coach Joe. And Lewis Solomon airs it out. He underthrows his receiver, Terry Smith. And it's incomplete. Broken up by... Mike Wardlaw. You mentioned Jay Paterno. You know, we've been here so many times. We've seen, You talk about famous fathers. Look at this. Bill Curry, of course, a coach down there in Kentucky, and Al Grove, coach of the Giants in Wake Forest. He's been coaching a lot of years at a lot of different places. Jesse Jackson, Yousef, was the linebacker here last year and started and played well. Derek, we talked about, was a walk-on. Bob Greasy's son, Scott, Calvin Pete, Ricky's, I mean, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> There's Bill Curry sneaking away from the Wildcats for a day. A veritable who's who. Solomon on the option, pitches it to Blunt. Blunt turns the corner nicely over midfield down to the 46-yard line. Clemson still has its running game in order. A pickup of 19 yards that time. Keith Lyle finally pushed him out of bounds. Clemson has nothing to show for it so far, but they have run the ball well here in the second half. If nothing else, they're showing Ken Hatfield that they've got some back. I mean, they came in, they were beating soundly in that first half. It's 28-7, to 7, but they aren't quitting. 
coming out. They had that great first drive. Defensively, they've been sound, and here they are now, again, picking up a first down and moving on the Cavaliers. In a nutshell, Tim, this is their season. No team has ever won the ACC title with three losses. And with Florida State in the party this year, that won't be the case, probably. Rudy Harris crosses the 40 down to the 37. Next Saturday, ABC Sports presents a doubleheader. First, 12 noon Eastern. Boston College, Penn State, Auburn, Florida, UCLA against Washington State. And then at 3.30, it's the SEC Game of the Year. As number four, Tennessee takes on number six, Alabama. Tennessee upset today. A handoff to Blunt. And Blunt is tackled at about the 36-yard line by Randy Neal. Virginia now has to adjust, and I'm sure Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, is doing just that because this is a different offensive scheme than they were planning for. They were planning for the power game, but when Harris went out and Solomon replaced Moncrief, now everything's changed in the run of the option, and they're hitting the perimeters. They're hitting the corners. So when that happens, you've got to have a man on the dive man, a man take the quarterback, and a man take the pitch man. And right now, the Cavaliers have not adjusted that well. But their fans here are in love with them. Third and two. Harris has the first down. And he is a load. And he could score. Rudy Harris, don't be so mean, down to the two-yard line. A 34-yard pickup. Hey, when he gets 245 pounds going, that's inertia. I'll never forget the 75-yard homecoming run he had against Duke two years ago. You get this 250-pound rolling, and it's hard to stop. Look at him high-stepping. This is a big man. Six, two and a half, 250 pounds. And it takes two or three guys to get him out of bounds. Well, Clemson had just five first downs in the first half. They have six already in the second half. All in motion. Harris gets the call again. No signal as of yet. And they're going to mark it at about the one foot line. P.J. Killian came up to make the tackle from his linebacking position. Kenny Hatfield still very much in this game. Looking at his Harris is down. He's not getting up as quickly. I think he might have landed on the football. The bottom line is the clock continued to roll. Finally, the officials stopped it. Now, why are we worried about the clock and it's a third quarter and it's a 28 to 7 ball game? Well, because right now Clemson's got to be very aware of that clock and utilize it to the maximum from now until the end of the ball game if they've got any shot of overcoming a 21 point deficit. You know, you'll criticize Clemson, and people will criticize them for not being a good come-from-behind team because they don't pass well, but they've done it with the running game here. Good push from the offensive line, though. Trying to see who that was at the bottom of the pile. Tripped him up with people sitting on top of him. Let's go back to New York now, and John Saunders with this update. Cal in Washington, and after Matt Jones with a three-yard touchdown run made at 14-7, Lindsey Chapman fumbles the kickoff. Russell Harrison recovers. A couple of quick strikes, and Washington leads 21-7. Well, Christmas comes early for Washington with that one. Rudy Harris coming off the field after that last carry. Could not make it into the end zone from the two-yard line. Harris, though, had a big 34-yard run to set up this good field position for Clemson just moments ago. Immobilizing that arm. I can't tell if it's his hand or thumb or whether it's his shoulder, and he's just trying not to move the arm. And Solomon tries to take it himself. No signal. Boy. Did not get in. Goal line defense. The front three, front four, loaded up, making the front eight. They've got to try to establish a new line of scrimmage a yard deep. Now watch the penetration of the guys on the right. See, now they want to get a yard deep, just submarine under people, then let the linebackers fill and come over top. Tim, I'm not so sure he didn't get he in. He was in. He was in. He broke that imaginary plane. Third and goal. He was not in. Well... I don't think there's any choice right here for the coach, Ken Hatfield. 
Oh, it's not even a, they're not even thinking about that. They're going, and they're sending the big guy in, Harris. Hey, Rudy, don't worry about the arm. That ball's not that heavy. It'll feel better if he gets in. And here he comes. It's hammer time. Seal wins the battle on the offensive line. Again, Virginia gets a good push. And look at the linebackers fill. That time, it wasn't even close. Just listen. No question about it. Rudy Harris came in and got it done. And this ball game has taken on a new complexion. There is a flag, however, in the end zone. We'll wait and see what that is. <laughs> Looks like some concern on the fans here in Virginia. Boy, this place got quiet. We have offsides on the defense. We'll penalize five yards on the kickoff. You mentioned concern. That looks like concern, and so does that. You know why? Because there's such a fear factor regarding Clemson. They've won 29 out of 31 times they've played. They tied the other one. Virginia's only won once, and they're saying, whoa, could this be it? Are they coming? Look at the stadium. It's like dumbfounded. No matter how much you try, you cannot ignore the streak. And it's 28 to 14. Things shaping up very interestingly. We'll be back in a minute. Back in 1990, Clemson came into Scott Stadium having won every game in the overall series. 29-0-0, but then Kirby and company snapped the streak for their first win ever over the Clemson Tigers. And you don't think this was a big win? Look at that. They tore the house down. Or at they, least the goalposts. They better start remembering that because Virginia, after going up 28 to nothing, since then they fumbled the kickoff, the half ran out, and they punted. No question, the momentum has swung here. As Jeff Save kicks it off. And back deep, Kevin Brooks, Jared Washington. This is Washington at the 10. Out to the 23, a 13-yard return, and Clemson is fired up, and there's a flag down on the field. It's a late flag, too. See, again, you got to control your emotions. I'm not, I don't know what this penalty is because I didn't see an infraction. But I can tell you this, the attitude on the sidelines of Clemson has changed. They believe they're in this game now. We have a block in the back during the run back. On the receiving team, it'll be a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So that'll push it back to about the 13-yard line. And now it is Virginia making the mistakes in the second half. That last scoring drive, nine plays, 63 yards, and just 255. So they covered it in a hurry. How about this, too? Virginia's been allowing just 94 yards rushing per game. Today, they've given up 221. Well, we'll see if Bobby Goodman can stem the tide here. First down and 10, no huddle. Play called on the sidelines. Way and Kirby in the backfield. The handoff to Kirby, out of the eye. And he's out to the 15-yard line. Kirby's playing a little bit dinged up now, too. He's got that shoulder and the bruised knee. Not running with the same authority he did in the first half. But he's not going to come out. Two letters tell you that. TV. No, he's, he's limping a little bit. Still cannot get over that Arkansas upset over Tennessee. And boy, is Eric Zier a special talent down in Georgia. That's Kirby again, and he got over the 15 to about the 16-yard line. Now this brings up a big third down situation for the Cavaliers, because if they don't get the first here and punt, because of the field position now, Clemson's going to start with good field position offensively. Tackle that time made by Kenzel Jackson. Another upset, Illinois over Ohio State today. Shane Matthews and crew rebounding after getting hammered by Mississippi State last week. Third down and six, a critical third down for the Clemson defense. Out of the shotgun. All day to pass. 
and it's complete, but is it a first down? Depends on the spot. I don't think he came across. They cannot give him that mark because he was down, and when his butt hit, and then his shoulder, he didn't have enough for the first down. Charles Way made the reception, and Wayne Simmons was there to touch him down after he'd fallen. So Virginia will have to punt. And they will have good field position. Harkle Road standing on his six-yard line. A high punt. And that's Robert O'Neill at the 37 stutter step. Tries to get outside, comes back inside, out to the 45. A 42-yard punt, seven-yard return. Clemson in this one. Did you know the first robot to white clock a human was invented at Clemson in 1988? And look at his name, Kirby. Kirby. From, zero, from zero to 60 in five seconds. They misspelled it, but that's Kirby. <laughs> Boy, he looks different today, doesn't he? Wearing 42? <laughs> a little bit quicker, too. You know, since it was 28 to nothing, Virginia's been out gained 189 yards to 33. Here's Rodney Blunt. Tries to get to the corner, turns it just a touch, trying to square those shoulders, and pushed out at the Virginia 48-yard line. Mike Wardlaw pushed him out, but not before a nice pickup by Rodney Blunt. How about this? This is what we were just talking about. Completely different second half than we saw in the first half. Again, Clemson still going to the wide side of the field, though. Set up with two tight ends, backs in the eye. Solomon keeps it himself on the option. And you know what, Tim? I've really been impressed with this ball handling. Solomon keeps. Not only that, but you know what's happened, and we just said it. They continue to go to the wide side of the field, but now they're changing up their tendencies. This time they go back to the short side. Watch this. Now the, the wide side's over here, but they go back to the short side, away from where Virginia's expecting them. Great fake into the line. And again, what that does, takes the guy in that's supposed to take the quarterback. He breaks outside in a big game. Solomon gaining 81 yards so far this afternoon on nine carries. First and 10. Anxiety written on the faces of many people here at Virginia cheering for the Cavaliers. This one is complete to Terry Smith, and it hung up there for what seemed like an eternity, Tim. You know what? I'll guarantee you, Solomon's laughing. He says that could be the ugliest pass I've ever thrown. Hey, I don't know how you caught it. A pickup of 14 yards, though. Look at this thing. It just sails on it. It's a dead duck. And then he goes up, and Terry Smith reads it and says, I'm going to get this thing anyway. Extends himself, gets it at his highest point, and pulls it down. That's when the quarterback walks over and says, hey, thanks. I don't believe you caught that. Lewis Solomon has been living right. First and 10. Gives it to the fullback that time, Howard Hall. Pickup of a few. We would like to pause five seconds now to allow our ABC stations to identify themselves. Mark Jones, Tim Brandt, that little one, and a good ball game, 28 to 14. This stadium is starting to sound like the library. It's quiet in here. You see the time remaining in the third quarter, second down and eight. A capacity crowd of over 42,000 on hand here at Scott Stadium. A down and out into the end zone and incomplete. He tried to hit Terry Smith. But again, they're breaking tendency. They're going away from what Virginia expected. Almost all day on second down, Virginia's run the football. Now, do you like that call, Tim? What do you think? Sure, why not? You're down 28 to 14. You've got your kids believing again. Go for the go for the green. There's Sandra Welsh. She's concerned, too. George Welsh's wife. She's hiding down the end of the stadium. Yeah, she, she wore a bigger smile in the first half. <laughs> 
Solomon takes it himself and coughs it up. Tolliver recovers it, and Virginia has it back. Wow, does that one sting. Now, hold on. Are they saying the ground caused the fumble and that there was no fumble? Watch this. Let's see if he hits or if that ball's loose before he hits the ground. Again, he looks at one receiver, sees the opening, and pulls it down. Watch. His knee's down. His knee's down. He was down before the ball was loose. Crowd here doesn't like it. I'm not so sure that thing wasn't loose before his knee hit. Well, we'll take another look at it when we can, but right now, Clemson's going to try to put three more on the board. Nelson Welch into attempt a field goal from 37 yards out. He's 8 of 10 on the season. No good. And it's wide to the left. One of the few that he's missed this season. You know the fumble? Moot point. Doesn't matter. Not anymore. And there's Sandra Welch breathing a huge sigh of relief. What a wonderful woman. You know, there's a ritual here at the University of Virginia. Every Thursday afternoon, Mrs. Welch brings a basket full, I mean a laundry basket full of chocolate chip cookies to the team. And you should have seen them sprint off the field to get some of those. I stuck my hand in there, Tim. Almost had it bitten off. <laughs> First down and ten. Goodman rolls out, and he has a man open. That's Pete. And Demetrius beat Allen, can't hang on. James Trapp was there providing the coverage. He's been burned a couple of times this afternoon. Seeing some of the leadership. Leadership of Bobby Goodman. He's getting after his guys a little bit. He knows they've lost that edge. These are the catches they were making in the first half again. Allen outruns the corner and is wide open. Now, here comes the pass. He lays out. It would have been a great catch, but that ball is definitely catchable. He was pulling it in when it got through. Goodman gave him a what for when he came back, too. Just 151 pounds. <laughs> Terry Kirby tiptoeing out over the 20 to 23 yard line. Monday from the nation's capital. An AFC-NFC battle between Denver and Washington. Mark Rippon of the Redskins against John Elway of the Denver Broncos. We told you Kirby had 90 yards in the first half. In the second half, six carries for just 20 yards. They put the clamps on him a little bit, answering the challenge of Kenny Hatfield and Ron Dickerson, the offense, uh, defensive coordinator for Clemson. Third down and seven. Clemson needs a stop. And they should have had an interception. That was Eric Jeter who could have caught that one. And what a lift that would have been. But still, they stop him. Now Virginia has to punt. And once again, Clemson's going to get good field position. Goodman put one for his last six. This one wasn't even close. And probably should have been picked. The thing that's troubling, though, if you're Clemson, is that you've been in Virginia territory twice now. Two times, actually, when you haven't been able to cash in. The last one coming on that missed field goal attempt. There's Harkle Road. High punt. To the 33, Robert O'Neill. And he breaks through. There's a flag back at midfield, and O'Neill is pushed out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Illegal block. They're going to bring it back, but still, Clemson will have pretty decent field position, but certainly not what they would have had without the flag. 43-yard punt and a 28-yard return if it stands. See, these are backbreakers. When you have a 28-yard return called back because of a bad block, that kills you. We have a block in the back above the waist. During the run back, it was after change of possession, 10-yard penalty. We see so much of that, Tim, in college football. It's unbelievable. It really is. Well, that's, that's a hard one to avoid. See, this is, this is above the waist, and that's, that's difficult to avoid. This is for safety reasons, or below the waist, rather. And here they go, in the back. I don't see it. There it is. 37 did it. Yep. So, you say, Brian Dawkins, you're guilty. Watch the bottom right-hand corner of your screen right there. Well, actually, they have two of them. Take your pick. 
Terrence Dixon and Brian Dawkins, both guilty. Ball at the 39, backs out of the eye for the Tigers. A mix-up, and Lewis Solomon fell forward for a gain of one if he's lucky. It has been a completely different second half for the Clemson Tigers. 164 in the second half already. And we haven't played an entire quarter yet. No, but again, now you're starting to feel back the change back the other way, almost like a pendulum. Right now you've had that bad block, negated a 28-yard return, and a broken play. Offensively, they need something big to happen. Positive. That's in the eye, and slot left. Solomon with a quick out, three-step drop, and it is complete to the far sideline. That's Larry Ryans, a six-foot, 184-pound senior from Greenwood, South Carolina. You know what we have not seen this game? That was big last week in the big 54-point win over Uni uh, University of Tennessee Chattanooga is the reverse with Ryans right there. He had two reverses for 77 yards, and we haven't seen that in this game, although I suspect some point we will. Well, Wouldn't he, be a bad time for it right here. And he's one of those speed guys as we look at Rudy Harris, who is injured again. Harris was shaken up on that last touchdown drive before he did finally get the touchdown. And he's limping off again. He's seven rushes for 50 yards today. And a touchdown. This is a terrific setting for football, isn't it? Look at all the trees that surround Scott Stadium. It's a great campus. Yeah, I had a chance to uh, jog, take a look at some of the uh, fraternities. Jog by Fraternity Row. I've always liked this stadium. Third down and two, and a timeout and a whistle down on the field. Let's go back to New York for this update from John Saunders. All right, John, back here it's 28 to 14 in the third quarter, 125 to go in the period. Not a bad timeout. It's the first one they've used this half. Minute 25 to go third quarter. It still leaves them two for the final quarter, which they will probably need if, in fact, they do get back into the ball game. But here, because there was confusion, they've been a little bit out of sync on this series. It's a good time to take the tee, come over, settle things down, decide what you're going to do on this third down play, third and a long three, and get it done. Yeah, there have been some great comebacks here. You told me about one when you played here back in 1972, and I wonder who's that good-looking number 21 <laughs> guy? Where is the face? Unbelievable. Look at that. <laughs> one of the best looking guys in college football. Man, Tim Brandt. Heck did you guys get that thing? <laughs> hey, I will tell you, though, my senior year right here in Scott Stadium, we were down 23 to nothing at halftime, and we came back and won that game 24-23. So, you know, there have been some comebacks. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. <laughs> the back's out of the eye on third and two, and Rodney Blunt has the first down and more. He could score. Rodney Blunt scores the touchdown, and we have a game. 53-yard romp and a touchdown. And now there's doubt everywhere except that section, which is Clemson's. And they're saying it's still Virginia. On third down and two, Rodney Blunt ran off the left side and ran and ate up more real estate than Donald Trump. Well, we said something had to po happen positive. They needed a big play. They got it. The timeout to decide what to do, it paid off big time. Welch with the extra point. And he misses it. That is a big miss. That means they have to go for two if indeed it comes down to that. Well, you think that's not a sick look on his face? But he's smart, see, now. The kicker wants to get by him. Welsh wants to walk by him. Kenny puts his arm around and says, hey, wait a minute, come back here. You can still win this ball game for us. Don't give up yet. This is still third quarter. Another look at that run by Rodney Blunt. He exploded. Well, what he did was he cut back against the pursuit. And when he found that alley, that lane, that air, he went through it, got into the secondary, and they aren't going to catch him. 12 rushes today, 131 yards. Nelson Welch with a key miss here. You know, Tim, last year in this game, he missed a few field goals, too, before finally coming back with 46 seconds to go to tie it up. And, uh, and Kenny Hatfield is trying to make sure that his head is screwed on right, too. Kickers are so much like golfers, it's incredible. 
when you're out of sync, things are more mentally than anything else. You get down on yourself, and it really keeps you out of sync. Kenny's trying to say, hey, listen, come back. You can still help us here. Nelson Welsh is a good athlete, too. I've seen him run guys down and tackle them on punts and kickoffs before. Good athlete, strong guy. Had a look at him in the weight room. He's put together. Jeff Save will kick it off, and Kevin Brooks is back deep with Jared Washington for Virginia. It's an eight-point lead for the Cavaliers. Washington. Pretty nice return out to the 33-yard line and more trash-talking from the sidelines. This game has really increased in temperature. And speaking of Maryland and uh, my partner's alma mater, Georgia Tech by four. Next week, speaking of Duke, they are Clemson's opponent. We have a block in the back on the receiving team. It's a 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Again, block in the back. You think that hasn't become a point of emphasis for these guys? We told you the umpire today is Judge Wampler. <laughs> He's taking it to court and convicting. So they push it back to the 19 yard line. Going to go back to what worked for him early on. No huddle. Goodman's 10 for 19 now, but he's just one for his last six passes. And they hand it off to the good hands man. Terry Kirby, who's over the 20 to the 23 yard line. Don't get down on Terry Kirby, though. 90 first half yards and broke some big ones. What he does best is everything together. He can receive, he can run, and right now, rather than being the thoroughbred, he's being the plow horse. They're asking him just to ground that thing up the middle and get some tough yardage, and that's what he's trying to do. 23 rushes, 113 yards for that man. So he's already three carries over his average. Coming off of back-to-back -back career weeks. He got hit hard that time at the 24-yard line. They're starting to key in on him just a touch. He is taking some pounding. I'll tell you, both the linebackers on the outside for Clemson, Shepard and Simmons, they know the difference between come here and sick him. Now watch this. Here comes Kirby. Here come the linebackers. Pow! Put him on his back. When you can do that to a ball carrier, you're delivering some power. And there is a lot of it on that Clemson defense. That was the last play of the third quarter. It's an eight-point Virginia lead, and we'll return with more action between Clemson and Virginia after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Hey, Tim, what do you think that Coach Ken Hatfield was saying there? I don't know if you read lips. I don't. No, but it looks like he just swallowed some bad chili or something. Look at that. That was the missed extra point. Just about made him sick. Excedrin headache number 46. Third down and four. Goodman incomplete. Tried to hit Kirby coming out of the backfield. Some miscommunication there. And they will have to punt. Clemson will get the ball back in good field position. And what a different story it was in the third quarter. 183 rushing yards for Clemson, just 26 for Virginia. 225 to 31 total yards. And look at the rushing yards, 183. More importantly, this half, four possessions, four punts for the Cavaliers. Darnell Stevens and Robert O'Neill on the punt. This is O'Neill at the 35. Tries to bounce it outside and is bounced at the 41, a 40-yard punt and a seven-yard return. Well, let's give credit where credit is due here. Lewis Solomon has done a fine job since relieving Richard Moncrief, Tim, in the second quarter of play. He came in, was a little shaky to start off, but then seemed to get untracked when he ran for that touchdown. Well, that's right. This is a young team that Clemson has, and he's one of the freshmen they have. And he's come in, and he's just energized them. You know, speaking of that, how about the freshman that came in this year's class? Emmett Smith's brother, Emery. He's a freshman now. Emmett's 5'9", 203 for the Cowboys. Emery's 6'1", 242. First down and 10. 
at the 41. A handoff for the fullback. Howard Hall pounds it down to the 46-yard line of Virginia. Hey, they're putting some muscle behind their hustle now. Carl Smith made the tackle from his free safety spot, a pickup of 13 yards and a first down. Virginia continues to have trouble with the triple option. This time they give it straight to the fullback. A lot of good blocks up front. Seegers, Hall, Nelson, Fortner, Lejeune, they're all doing a great job up front, and the option is definitely causing some read problems for the, the defense. And up to the fullback again, and this time they stuff it right near the line of scrimmage. They may have gained one. Ryan Keel was there to stuff the play. Virginia's rushing defense this year has been outstanding. But Clemson has put up 311 already. Yeah, see the bad trend there as you look at it, 34, 64, 102, more yards every week. Then they pull it back to 48, but then 226, 311. So it's going the opposite way a coach would like. Yeah, Coach Wells said they did take a step, a small one, be it, backwards last week. Second and nine, Solomon to pass. He's trying to hit Terry Smith, and this one is out of bounds. Same pattern that they ran earlier in the third quarter that was incomplete. I understand what they're trying to do, and it's much easier sitting up here watching the game and then talking about it after the fact. But on second down and long, with all the success they've had on the option on the corners, you would have thought they would have gone back to that. Now, because of that incomplete pass on a high, low percentage play, high risk factor, now they've got third down and about nine. That's tough to overcome. They're three of ten on third down conversions. This is a third and long. It's loud. In the gut of the fullback, and he'll be about four yards short of the first down. Chris Slade made the tackle. Well, Slade's been relatively quiet here in the second half. Well, because they haven't passed that much, it's not really a passing team, and he's a pass rush specialist. But he's a solid guy. Against the run, he's solid. You just keep an eye on him. You'll see him. He's around the football almost every time. Has one sack today, has 11 coming into the game. Now, Kenny Hatfield is calling his team over, and I guarantee you the players are saying, hey, we want to go for the first here, coach. It's fourth down and five. Again, it's not a high percentage play. You don't want to do that. But I will tell you this. What would be high percentage is to come out in a punt formation and run a fake punt because you're in their territory. So even if you fail, you've got them backed up to the 35 or 40-yard line. And defense has been solid this half. Tim, a great place to fake a punt? That's what I just said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, next Saturday, ABC Sports presents a doubleheader first at 12 noon Eastern. Penn State hosts Boston College, or Auburn meets Florida at 12 noon Pacific. UCLA tackles Washington State. Then at 3.30, it's the SEC Game of the Year as Tennessee takes on Alabama. The Midwest third-ranked Michigan battles Indiana or at 3.30 Pacific, Cal invades USC. Check for the game on your ABC station and for the other available games on pay-per-view. Not a bad deal for nine bucks and change. Pretty good streak there for Doc, huh? Old Doc's had 369 straight games with Clemson. wondering about this fourth down you know it's not unusual for Clemson to go on fourth down they've gone nine times this year and made it six now I'm not a Virginia grad or a Phi Beta Kappa but that's pretty good percentages just trying to draw them off sides yeah they're not going to snap this almost had them four on the play clock now Virginia knows what they're doing. And they'll take the delay of game penalty. Still very, very good strategy by Kenny Hatfield and Clemson. And excellent discipline by UVA. We have delay on the kicking field. And in comes Nelson Welch, the punter. Watch the right hand of your screen. See that? Cavaliers almost jumped. They almost had the penalty they set out for. 
Now, if I'm on defense, I'm looking for the fake. But more importantly, here's a guy that's pushed it inside the 20 seven times this year, and it looks like he's going to try to do it again. Let's see what he does. Nice high punt. It's going to bounce at the five, and they don't get there in time. So it'll come back out to the 20, a 45-yard punt, but not the type that they wanted. Well, we are at the President's School, founded in 1819 by Thomas Jefferson, and I wonder what he would have thought about this student's work ethic. Probably would admire it. We'll be right back. Well, don't start howling or anything, but we are under a full moon here at Scott Stadium. 28-20, 13-02 remaining in the ballgame. Virginia leads it. On the option, here's Goodman. And Goodman has a gain of close to four yards. The clock keeps running. Here, Wilson made the tackle. He's the left end. Clemson enjoying a good second half in terms of field position, Tim. Well, not only that, but you know that last stop by the Virginia defense was the first time the defense has stopped Clemson this half other than Clemson stopping themselves like with the turnover and the missed field goals. And the missed conversion is what looms large now, too. Backs out of the eye, hand off to Terry Kirby. It has been a huge workhorse for the Virginia offense this afternoon. He's out to the 29. 25 rushes, 122 yards. One of those backs that seems to get better the more he carries the ball. He may not be in a class of his own, but I'll tell you this. Where he is, it doesn't take long to call roll. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Terry Kirby fans across the country, I'm sure, as well as Marshall Falk fans. And Bobby Goodman steps back and calls timeout. That's the first one of the half. They have two remaining. We're going to call a timeout and come back after give you after you give us a break. Strike up the band. We've got 11.46 remaining and an eight-point Virginia lead. They have the ball third and one on the 29. Goodman on the option. And I don't think he got the first down. How about that? Do you realize Goodman had as many touchdowns in the first half as he has yards this half? Four. A great surge that time by the Clemson defense. Pierre Wilson led the charge. That poor girl didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I think they're in shock here at Scott Stadium. Now, see, this is all going to depend on the mark. You see where the ball is. They've got to get up right to that line. Uh, here comes the defense. Push, push, push. Hold your block. Now pursue. Make the stop. Where's the forward progress? Does he get across that line? And then the fill, and they take him down. He didn't make it. You know, Wayne Simmons was there and Wilson. But they're going to measure anyway. Decision See, time for now Welsh. No, I don't think there's any decision in it. I think you punt this ball away, but the look, the offense says we're going to go for it. And George Welsh says, no, we're not either. He's been around a long time. He's a very smart coach. He's a very good coach, and he knows this is not the time to go for it at your own 30. Clemson trying to hustle to get their right players and personnel on the field. That's Darnell Stevens standing on the 50. Stevens will return it. And he's tackled at the 43-yard line, but Clemson in primetime field position after that 33-yard punt and five-yard return. There's Moncrief. He started the game. Richard Moncrief, he came out, gave way to Lewis Solomon, and Solomon has ignited this Clemson team. Looking at another good finish, like last year when Virginia led and Clemson came back to tie. Here's the call. And the ever popular push in the back. Amazing. Well, this was last year's finish. Nelson Welch with 46 seconds to go in the ballgame, tied it up. 
to make it 20 to 20 and then Virginia had a chance Houston from point blank range had it blocked that would have won the game but instead it ends in a 20 20 draw that kick looked like the patented Florida State field goal and Kenny Hatfield is hotter than July about something and so is the Clemson coaching staff up next to our booth. Well, I'll tell you what, he has been hit by penalties all afternoon. I think he's tired of it. Penalties have killed Clemson. They've had eight penalties for 60 yards. That would get any coach upset. And it's first down Virginia because of it. See, they called it before the, the transition, before the ball changed hands. A crucial penalty. And Kirby pounds it out over midfield to the 49 but that penalty Tim will be talked about for a long time absolutely it changes the complexion of this entire game see what Clemson had it with good field position and all the momentum now they give it back here comes Kirby that's all you need is just to give him a little bit of motivation and he starts bowling guys over or well, he dropped dime on a couple of Clemson tacklers would be tacklers got that zinger in the shoulder again he's got 132 yards Keep in mind, it was it was Kirby's fumble last year against Clemson that allowed Clemson to come back and tie that game. Virginia had it, and they were running the clock out. Kirby put it on the ground, and it cost him. Guarantee you, that's going through his mind. And this injury here, I'd be shocked if it kept him out. Yeah, he's been dinged a couple of times. First and ten, the ball on the 50-yard line, right in midfield. Jared Washington is the deep back. He takes Kirby's place, and he takes the handoff. And he takes a hit after a gain of about one. Well, Kenny Hatfield has to be thinking there is no justice. He got robbed in the first half of that catch that they ruled a no catch on the sideline, and then that penalty was huge. I'm still not sure they gave a positive explanation about it. I mean, they gave the block in the back. That's the only signal we saw. But that block must have happened way before the, the punt. How could that be? Kenny Hatfield in his third year as head coach and we have a look at Kirby on the sideline. Second and nine. Goodman rolling out. Gets it away to Charles Way. And Way is rocked at the 45 yard line by Darnell Stevens. Darnell Stevens, a guy that had a big impact impact in last year's game against Virginia on special teams running back punts. Bobby Goodman, 9 of 14 in the first half, 2 of 7 only in the second half. Third down at 5. Slot left. Under heavy pressure. And he's sacked back to the 41 yard line by Brentson Buckner. And 40. Brenton Buckner was a defensive tackle. This year they moved into the middle, put him down a nose tackle, nose guard, best shape of his life. Says he wants to be the guy who started the win streak again against Virginia. He's been playing with a bad back. Tremendous talent. Tim, you don't think Clemson gets guys that can run 301 pounds. That's a lot of sandwiches and no salad bar, but he runs a 4840. Let's see what happens now. The last play has been clarified. And it was illegal use of the hands. All right, so that was the explanation last time. Now Clemson gets it back. Guarantee you they want mistake-free returns here. And here's Darnell Stevens again. Darnell. Nice-looking return out to the 34-yard line. A 16-yard return after that 39-yard punt. And he was pushed out of bounds by Randy Neal. Stevens coming off of a knee injury, not quite the same player he was last year, but still a solid performer. Well, Monday, AFC against NFC. Denver and John Elway. Well, what did Elway sensation when they come, come back last week? Oh, man. How many times did we see him do it? Give us to the fullback, and he bowled over about three Virginia tacklers. That's Howard Hall. Look at him. He says, come get some. I'm the man. It's my world. 
Carl Smith finally derailed the train. Just another one of those patented fullbacks. They all run about 245 pounds. Spinning, turning, driving. Looks like a whirling dervish. Moves the chains. So you got to reserve some time in the whirlpool when you try and tackle Hootie Harris. It's a first down. As Keel is the injured player coming off the field. The ball is at the Clemson 45, 846 to play. Battle between two of the best in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Terry Kirby still a little woozy on the sidelines. This is the 13th 100 yard game of Kirby's career. The toss this time to Blunt. And Blunt has stopped up after a gain of about two. Rodney Blunt from Pensacola, Florida. And his counterpart, Terry Kirby, from Tab, Virginia. This is what we were talking about earlier. Clemson running the football, dominating the second half. Second and nine. The option, backside pressure and tackle by Chris Slade. All day long, Clemson has run away from Slade, and it's almost as if he said, I've had enough. You talk about speed from a guy that big, 6'5", 235, came all the way across the field. Now the option goes away from him. Watch out of the left hand of your screen. Here comes 85. Chris Slade chasing down Solomon, who's only 5'10", 168, and a scooter. A critical third and five now for Clemson. Solomon incomplete at the 40-yard line. Great coverage by Anderson. Terry Smith was the intended receiver, but Anderson was on him like a blanket. And so was Greg McClellan. Kenny Hatfield again thinking about it, looking at the clock, 7-10 remaining. Well, I don't know. It's still too early to go for it. That's in this it, situation, but he's going. That's what he's doing. I don't agree with this call at all. With seven minutes left in the game, the way your defense has been dominating. They've got five to go. Solomon is going to try and do it himself. And he'll get there. Lewis Solomon, the redshirt freshman with a clutch play right there, flushed out of the pocket. First down, 10 yards. It was not high percentage. But he made it. You gotta love the poise of Lewis Solomon. He showed us something today. How about Kenny Hatfield? It's the tenth time he's gone for a first down on fourth this year, and now he's made it seven times out of those ten. He also has 100 yards. Solomon does in this ball game. Hey, Hatfield will gamble. Got to know when to hold them and fold them. Split backs. First and ten. Quick drop, and it's incomplete and intended for Terry Smith. A catchable pass. You you called that one right. A oh. quick drop. <laughs> That's one that Terry Smith wishes that he could have back. Led the team in receiving last year. Coming into the ball game, he only needed four catches to reach 100 for his career. He has two this afternoon. I'd like to see him. If I'm a Clemson fan, I'd like to see him catch a touchdown. You know, when he's caught a touchdown, Clemson seven and zero. Oh. Back to the pro set, slot right. Now they shift back to the eye. Option. Look who it is. Chris Slade with the six shooters. Even his name sounds big time, doesn't it? Oh, it sounds bad. Chris Lee. <laughs> a gunslinger from Tap, Virginia. Outstanding player again, like a shot on the left hand of your screen. Looks like a replay that won two minutes ago. 
really planted Solomon in the carpet too. All American last year he'll be that this year as well and he's another future NFL player and Tim Clemson and Ken Hatfield keep finding themselves in third and long situations not so much third and long last time it was only third and five but here they face a third down and 11. I'm sure they don't want to get it to another fourth down situation and face that kind of pressure again. Absolutely not. But the situation is this. They have buried their offense so much in this half and gone away with all their tendencies and gotten away from the predictability that they're causing a lot of problems for Virginia. I mean, Virginia is right now playing on its heels, got its head on its swivel, all except for Slade. Interesting. I know you gave me a funny look when I said a lot of the ACC folks say Slade reminds them of Lawrence Taylor. Well, that's because LT played at Carolina right here in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And if you look at him, he does play like a Lawrence Taylor or a Charles Haley. He's got that same body structure, the same speed, and the same type of football mentality of bad intentions. He's got a good future, too. And Toronto Blue Jays' future looking a little brighter after this 7 to 5 win. Cito Gaston. Dodging a huge bullet. And Juan Guzman was the starting pitcher today. He has been red hot down the stretch. Coming off of that shoulder injury. Well, with 6.04 remaining, chances are that Kirby will get back on the field. Third down, 11. Quarterback draw. Lewis Solomon is as cool as an assassin. Unbelievable. The freshman with a 13 yard pickup. I don't know if he's supposed to be afraid or apprehensive, but he isn't. Well, I don't know how cool he is, but I tell you this he is very quick. This is a designed quarterback draw. He comes back inside the guards, and by that time the split was made, the hole was there, and he capitalized and got the first. He looks like he's having fun this afternoon. He really does. Two tight ends. They give it to the fullback, and he's got some room. Pushed out of bounds at the one yard line, and touchdown. They call it a touchdown. Rudy Harris hits Paters. Things going through his mind right now. Oh, the look says it all. Do they go for two or do they go for one with 531 remaining? I'd go for two. I'd go for two. Even if you don't get it, you can still come back and get the field goal. You gotta go for two. Yep. I'm not so sure I'd take Rudy Harris out of the game either. And the way he's been running over people. They're going to come to this side. Larry Ryans is in the slot. Solomon keeps it himself, but there's a flag down. He stopped about two yards short of the end zone. That was a broken play. Definitely. Talk about confusion. We have a dead ball foul. False start on the offense. We'll run the play again. All right, so that's a break. No, no, a that's a break for Clemson. See, it was a dead ball foul. Had that thing been thrown when it was a live ball, Virginia would just decline it, and they'd still have the lead, 28-26. The way it is, it's going to be more difficult, but obviously Clemson gets another shot. You know, this is the first two-point conversion attempt by Clemson this year, and look at Kenny Hatfield. Awesome. This is after the play. He wants to talk to these guys. It's a little tougher now because it's pushed back to the eight. Still, I'd be surprised if they don't come to the wide side over here. Backs out of the eye. In the slot, it's Larry Ryans. The option, they gave it to the fullback, and they stuffed it this time. Oh, I don't. Well, that was Howard Hall on the run. We got a ball game oh, now. We sure do. Come on back.
The Virginia medical staff is working frantically on Terry Kirby because of a shoulder injury. We'll see if he comes back in. At the eight-yard line, that's Washington. And another look at that Clemson touchdown. Rudy Harris has been strong. Look at the tackles Harris breaks, though. One, two tackles. Then he just outruns the secondary for a man that size. Now, there was question about whether he got in or not. Watch his feet. His foot's in. Does the ball break the plane? Watch the pylon. All right, now see the pylon on the left? Did he get in? Well, they said he did. It's on the scoreboard, and Washington is the tailback. Terry Kirby is still on the sidelines. He is not in the game, Terry. Let me follow up something that you said. You mentioned the medical staff working frantically on Terry Kirby. When it was time for the kickoff, he came bouncing off the bench and came up to the sideline like he was going to play, like he was going to come in for that first down, and all of a sudden, it looked like that shoulder popped on him. They rushed him back to the bench, and they're still working on him. Right now, Charles Way, the fullback, checks out. And Virginia sets up with Tyrone Davis, slot right. Got those shoulder pads and jersey off. Goodman back to pass. He puts it up for Davis. And what a grab. Complete of the 45. A 28-yard pickup and a big first down for the Cavaliers. Tyrone Davis works in between the zone. Now watch this. Gets by the cornerback. The safety hadn't come over yet. And Goodman puts it right between the two of them. Well-thrown ball. Fine catch. Tyrone Davis, Tim, three receptions for 98 yards. And two touchdowns. Beth come out in the offset eye this time. The handoff is to Washington. 4.35 and ticking. The tackle that time made by Tim Jones of Clemson. 28-26, Virginia. Kirby out of the game. Shoulder pads all taped up. 4.20 still left in the game. Plenty of time. Clemson with no timeouts left. Virginia with two. So obviously the advantage right now, even without Kirby, belongs to the Cavaliers. Backs in the offset eye again. Play action by Goodman over the middle, and he had Tyrone Davis and overthrew him. He was open on the post. Boy, he was locked in man-to-man -man coverage with Jeter, and he had beaten, had Jeter beaten. He knows it, too. The Cavaliers have not scored in the second half. They led 28-0. It's now 28-26. Give the big guys some credit up front. Could be the best offensive line Virginia's ever had. They gave him great protection. Goodman, maybe the adrenaline pumping a little too much, a little too strong with the pass. They've got three wide receivers in. Big third down play here. Out of the shotgun. Goodman drills it, and he's picked off. Darnell Stevens. is rocking. Clemson right now believes it's going to win this football game. 3.53 left, and the Tigers feel like they're in control. We'll have the finish when we come back. It was third down and seven. Clemson goes to a nickel package. Darnell Stevens, number 30, right there to the left of your screen. They hit him like a linebacker. They drop back in zone coverage. And Goodman throws into the coverage. Bad decision, bad throw. Clemson has the football. Darnell must have heard me when he said, when I said he wasn't the same player he was last year. The fullback, Rudy Harris, pounds it out for a couple of yards. Darnell Stevens last year was a terror on special teams. He returned some punts very well last year in the same game against Virginia, a game that was played in Clemson, South Carolina. Well, Stevens was a starter at cornerback in 91. That's when he hurt his knee and missed some time. His homeboys call him D. Nell. The pitch to Rodney Blunt. And Blunt is pushed out of bounds about two yards short 
of the first down by Mike Wardlaw. Look at Chris Slade. He was chasing him out of Scott Stadium. I think Solomon could feel him breathing down his neck. That's when he pitched it. Again, we tell you, Clemson has never made up a 28-point deficit to gain a victory in this stadium in the history of the school. The largest come from behind victory by Clemson was 18 points. And Ken Hatfield has pressed the right button here in the second half. 317 yards of offense. Third down and two. The toss and the first down. Rodney Blunt got the first down. That was impressive, too. They got the pitch to Blunt, and as soon as he secured the football, rather than heading to the corner, he turned direction and went straight for that first down marker. 15 rushes for Blunt, 140 yards. How about that? We said the two top rushing teams, also the two top rush defenses, the rushing teams win. What's that? <laughs> Split backs, and now they shift back into the eye. Terry Smith is split wide. And they go downfield to Wy Ryan's wide open. He catches it at the nine yard line. Larry Ryan's the speedster with a big catch for Clemson. 46 yard gain. You said definitely a speed guy. He is that. The first All American in Clemson track. 10 time All American. 110 meters at 55 meters. He's gone from the secondary to tailback, and watch this. Zone coverage, he splits the zone with his speed, gets by the secondary before they can adjust it all. How do you get behind the secondary in a zone coverage? Lewis Solomon, Tim, put that one right on the money. All he has to do is throw it as far as he can and hope the guy will get there. Ball handling now key. Rodney Blunt on the toss, gets to the corner. And a flag down in the backfield, and this one could come back. Tell you what it is, it's going to be holding Slade. Unnecessary, too, Tim, because that was away from the play. Since Slade got to this school, the Virginia coaches have pleaded with officials saying that they hold Slade all the time. He's that good, so they're holding him, and it never gets called. This time, they threw the flag immediately. Well, it is definitely against Clemson. And here's another look at it. They changed Slade to the left side this time. And look at the hole right there. There's no question about it. Slade's screaming for it, and he gets it. They were all over Slade like a hungry man on a Big Mac. Hey, give Slade a lot of credit here, because it was Slade that alerted the referee that he was being held, and that's when the flag came out. Interesting, too, isn't it? How Rick Glass, the defensive coordinator, switched sides that time, moved Slade to where the ball was going. Look at the difference in penalty yardage. Clemson almost doubled that of Virginia. First and 23. No flags. Looks like there was some motion on the left side of the line, but no flags dropped. And the fullback takes it up to the 20, Harris. Not only the motion, but I thought Slade was in the backfield before the ball was even snapped. He's quick, but not that quick. <laughs> Although you talk to him, he says, I'm quicker than gossip. <laughs> 140 and going. And what is going through the mind of Nelson Welsh right now? As we approach 130, he missed an extra point earlier. And he missed a field goal, too. off again down to the 16 yard line clock continues to move you see at 114 13 to go Clemson now positioning to win this football game Chris Slade made the tackle that time and the clock stops with 107 to play the timeout taken by Virginia and there's the guy I was talking about just a few moments ago last year came in with 46 seconds to go. We saw the tape. He tied it up. This time, he may have a chance to win it. A couple different strategies. A lot of teams, some guys don't even like to talk to the kicker before this. They're afraid they're going to make him nervous. See all the Clemson guys talking to him. Everybody's coming up. This coach is coming up. Hey, listen, everything's all right. He's trying to smile and say, hey, yeah, where are you going tonight after the game? Take the pressure off the guy. Right now, Clemson's got to be thinking, all right, we're going to run a play. We're going to try to make it work to get the first down because there's still a minute seven left. But what we want to do if we don't get the first is at least position the football near the middle in the middle of the hash marks to give him a straightaway shot well Tim where the ball is right now 
It would work out to about a 33 yard field goal which is very much within his range. He's kicked a field goal this year of 52 yards out. Oh he's got a strong enough leg but how severe is the angle. The ball right now is near the right hash mark. See all this goes to a kicker's mind. It's unbelievable that the ball actually started on this drive at about the seven yard line for Clemson. That penalty the hold against Slade really cost them in terms of yardage. And due to the length of today's game, we will be unable to bring you the thrifty car rental post-game report. So you mentioned how strong his leg is, and it is. He's hit a 40, he's hit that 52-yarder. Inside 30 yards this year, he's four for four. Well, that's where they are now. Third down and 16. And they hand it off to the fullback again. All right, and see what they did? Play. They came over, they wanted to get closer to the middle, they tried to come to this left side. They got a yard or two back closer to the middle, but they still didn't get it perfect, but it's in a lot better position than it was for Welch. The tackle, by the way, made by, by the way, Chris Slade on that last play. All right, Welsh has to put his failures down earlier in the ballgame. Just has to completely put those out of his mind. Got to give himself a checkup from the neck up and get rid of that stinking thinking. He's got to think positively now that he's going to put this thing through. Well, this one will come from 32 yards out. This year, between 30 and 39 yards, Welsh has been fairly accurate. Well, not so much. He is 0 for 3. Well, wait a minute now. We said 4 for 4. That's inside the 30. All right, now, between 30 and 39, that's where he's 0 for 3. And then you get back out longer than that, and he's confident again. Inside the mind of a kicker, huh? You do have to be a different sort to be a place kicker. Last year, he tied it up after earlier failures. He came back and found redemption. He tied it against Virginia. This year, the stage set once again for Nelson Welsh to try on the hero suit. And let's see if it fits. Clemson coaches in the box next to us won't even look. Nelson Welch nails it from 32 yards out, and Clemson is 55 seconds away from the best comeback in school history. Still time left for the Cavaliers now, 55 seconds. We saw this two years ago. Virginia was number one. Georgia Tech came in here, and in the last 55 seconds, took it the distance of the field and pulled that one out. Now it's got to be the Cavaliers. They've got to think positively. They've got to utilize this clock. 55 seconds is a lot of time in the hurry-up offense. And another look at this one. Welch knew this was good as soon as he kicked it. Well, not that much room to spare. Get yeah, that watch his reaction. To. See, now as soon as he kicked it, he knew it was through. Watch and Kenny Hatfield. You think he hadn't been playing head games with his kicker the whole game? You know, we saw him pull aside Nelson Welch after he missed the extra point and have a little discussion with him. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it helped. Whatever the case, Clemson with the one-point lead and 55 seconds remaining. And in a big end, Virginia without their star tailback, Terry Kirby. There's Terry Kirby right there. We were looking on the bench. We couldn't find him. He's all wrapped up now. He's got the towel around him. Not exactly where he wanted to be in a game like this. Tight fit situation. That's his kind of game. George Welsh's 5-0 season so far, a perfect season. Staring 5-1 in the face. And he splits it down to the 20. Charles Wade, the fullback, smartly runs out of bounds at the 27-yard line to stop the clock with 52 seconds to go. Well, there's a fine line between stopping the clock and getting yardage, and I think that's what George Welsh is telling him. Hey, you had another 10 to 15 yards you could have gotten before running out of bounds. So I don't think it was a smart play at all. As a matter of fact, I think he could have gotten that yardage and gotten out of bounds, and uh, 
Virginia would have been in better shape. Maybe being overcautious in that case. Houston, by the way, in case Virginia gets in range, has a good leg. The pass complete to Andrew Dosh at the 34, and he stops the clock with 47 seconds to go. Keep in mind, Virginia still has one timeout left. Clemson has none. 47 seconds left. They're only down by a point. Bobby Goodman threw that interception, which set up that Clemson score. To the sidelines, again complete, again to Dosh at the 38. If Clemson should hang on, this will be the largest comeback in school history. Ironic, isn't it? Yeah. It was against Virginia in 1966, and that was only 18 points. They moved the chains. Maybe there is something to the jinx. Goodman scrambles. Completes the pass to Aaron Mundy, the tight end of the 45, but don't the use the rolls. timeout yet. Get him up to the line. Use the pass to stop the clock. Quick. This is the clock play now. You see the clock right there. 27, 26. Goodman trying to get him up. First and 10. Goodman. A flag. And it'll be interference. And James Trapp grabbed the official. Not a wise move. James Trapp grabbed the official, was not flagged for it, but that's playing it kind of close. Very close. Pass interference by the defense. That's an automatic first down. Here's the replay again. First, let's check this out. There's the pass interference. He's riding his back. That's a good call. He's lucky he didn't get tapped. Now the official score tells us that there is no timeout left for Virginia. So they take that one off the scoreboard, and there are no timeouts left. The culprit was Robert O'Neill, the free safety, the All-American, who got flagged. Goodman looking downfield. Andrew Dodge incomplete. And the clock stops with 11 seconds to go. He went after James Trapp again. A little bit of a surprising call there because they've got to get at least another 10, 15 yards, maybe, to get in the range of Houston. His career long is 47 yards, Tim, and right now they are nowhere near that. Well, they, they need 10 yards. That's what I'm saying. They've got to get 10 to 15 yards to get within his range. That's why I'm surprised they went that the distance with that one when they only need one point for the tie. The field goal wins it. 11 seconds. Goodman taking a lot of time. Incomplete. Five seconds to go. He tried to hit Tyrone Davis, who has two touchdown receptions in the game. Well, now with no timeouts left, here's what has to happen. They've got to throw it to the sidelines and stop that clock now or let, let him used to come in now and attempt that thing way out of his range. It'd be ridiculous. Well, it would be a 57-yarder. See, they cannot take it across the middle again because they can't stop the clock. No timeouts left, so they've got to do it on the sideline. Let's see if this is the last play of the game. They're going to go into the end zone. This is it. They're going into the end zone. Clock has expired. Incomplete, and Clemson wins. The Clemson Tigers have rallied for the biggest comeback in school history. list at halftime trailing 28 nothing and win it 29 to 28 Lewis Solomon at quarterback led them there they had 11 seconds when this play started rolled left waited for it to develop forever and they just decided we're going to go for it on one play that's it how close was it not very never had a shot closer to being picked off than it was to being a reception and Nelson Welsh 
two years in a row, plays the hero for Clemson. What a great job by Lance Easton, the holder for the place kicker, to get that ball down, turn the laces, give Welsh a shot. The Chevrolet most valuable players in the game are, no question, Lewis Solomon from Clemson. What a performance by the wretched freshman. And Bobby Goodman from Virginia, the quarterback. What a ball game. We enjoyed it. We hope you did as well. Virginia falls to 5-1. and one. Clemson improves to 3-2. and two. I'm Mark Jones for Tim Brands and the rest of the ABC Posse. We'll see you next week. This week on ABC's Monday Night Football, it's an AFC-NFC showdown. Quarterback John Elway leads the Denver Broncos into the nation's capital to battle the Washington Redskins live. CFA College Football, this ABC Sports exclusive, has been brought to you by Pontiac and your nearby Pontiac dealers. We are driving excitement. By two-day priority mail service from your post office. By HP LaserJet Printers. If it isn't a laser jet, it's only a laser printer. And by Payne Weber, we believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Promotional fee has been paid to ABC by United Airlines. Come fly the friendly skies.